The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, September 2nd, 2021, years after zero. The NFL starts in one week. What? Yeah! We made it, man. The celebration from the toxic table at Ty Schmidt and at Boston Connor is needed and deserved. We are just seven, seven, seven days away from the NFL kickoff with the Buccaneers and Cowboys taking place down there in Champa Bay, Florida. I cannot wait for it. Obviously, there's a lot of college football on the night, including OH. Oh! Hosting the row in the boat, sons of bitches of Minnesota. I mean, football's all the way back, as are we. This is day 10 of COVID confinement. Here we go. Thank you. I feel damn good. All the symptoms are long behind me. I feel like a much better person. I've learned a lot about me. I've learned more about my body. I've learned more about this company. The way you guys back in the office have been able to put this show together with me FaceTiming in every single day has been nothing short of amazing and impressive. I appreciate the fucking hell out of all of you back there. At Tone Diggs, the COVID cowboy, host of Hammer Don, the podcast. I hear Gumpy still hot in his COVID cave. How is the entire Hammer Don show? Are we still riding in an incredible heat into this NFL season, into this college football season. How much money are we making tonight? Do you have any good feels or tells on what we should be hammering tonight, Tone Dig? Gumpy went uh, undefeated again last night. In- oh, Let's go, I Gump. have nine uh, NCAA picks for this weekend, four lean, so 13 altogether. None of them actually come tonight. BYU, by BYU or sorry, Boise UCF is tonight as well. Uh, two new coaching staffs. That's the other highlight game. UCF, a slight lean there, potentially. Their offense is incredible. And then a lot of people were on Minnesota tonight, plus the 14 and a half. Whoa. They have 20 returning starters, but those returning starters uh, were 120th on defense last year uh, and could not stop the run. So I'm worried about that. I'm staying away. I will just watch that to see if Ohio State does run up and down the field on the Gophers tonight. Okay, thank you, Tone, for that piece of information there. I put together a nice little parlay. Ooh, okay. yeah, what are we talking? Everybody that was minus 2,000 or bigger to win tonight, yes. I just parlayed them all together. <laughs> so I got it at plus... I got a, a 10 leg parlay uh, at plus 135. Yes. And uh, I feel really good about it. I, I don't know anything about any of these teams. I, like everybody else, will watch along and see where this journey to the top of the mountain for college football will go. Coastal Carolina is playing tonight. Mm-hmm. Obviously, last year they had a massive look at us and our mullets, bitches here. It was fun to watch them come into their own. I'm excited. Uh, for college football happening all weekend. Herb Street put out a tweet. I think there's like 15 games tomorrow as well. And then this weekend, there's a bunch. I mean, we are living fantastically. Hopefully, there another kicker or punter will have a performance like my dude Blake Hayes from the University of Illinois did this past weekend. Blake Hayes, I want to let you know, pal, I appreciate the hell out of you. The performance you put on in that week zero college football game where you won the game for the University Mm -hmm. of Illinois (laughs) will not go unnoticed, pal. Look for your locker in the next few days. There might be a gift from old Santa Claus, Miranda Claus, old Uncle Pat, maybe. I mean, I'm trying to figure out this name image likeness thing without potentially having to tell people that they aren't worth a fuck a year from now or two (laughs) years now when their college football careers are over. Uh, But I would like to at least send my thanks to punters and kickers around college football who do a hell of a job with a lot of pressure on them as going to class and representing for the brand. Blake Hayes was the first one this past weekend. I can't wait to see who does what they got to do this upcoming weekend. Let's talk about last night, shall we? Yep. So, Dolphins Twitter and I had a nice little rendezvous. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
So one particular tweet started the whole thing and said, is Dolphins Twitter dragging at Pat McAfee's show yet? For basically yesterday, I was questioning um, how the Dolphins are going to perform in the AFC East. Mm-hmm. This AFC East, by the way, not only the Buffalo Bills, who look unbelievable and just re-sign, or just signed Josh Allen to a long-term deal and McDermott and Bean and everything up there seems to be running beautifully, but also you got the big bad fucking wolf up in New England. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh. They spent $150 million on day one of the tampering period of free agency. Bill Belichick said, we ain't sucking again. <laughs> All right? I ain't, I ain't doing that, especially while watching Tom Brady go win a fucking Super Bowl. So... You have to take into account that Bill Belichick's going to be able to win games. He was able to win games last year with no roster. Yeah. And then you also got the Buffalo Bills who are a fucking wagon at this particular point. And I saw the odds that had Dolphins ranked above um, the Patriots in AFC standings. And with everything that has been coming out. Now, I'm being told by Dolphins Twitter that it's all a bunch of fugazi. It's all fake. All these reporters saying that the owner, Ross, and everybody else is still interested in Deshaun Watson. They're all full of shit, by the way. But for me, as somebody who's been in an NFL locker room and is somebody that, you know, observes and reports, the thought that here we are seven days away from the NFL season kicking off, and there's allegedly some allegations that the owner of the team doesn't want the quarterback to be the quarterback that is currently the quarterback. The quarterback, by the way, that we have gone to bat for at this particular show yep. since the beginning of this entire mm-hmm. thing, even back whenever Tannenbaum was saying that you can't can't draft Tua in the, in the top five with his injury history. I mean, we've been, I feel like, a pretty pro fins show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We let Gumpy talk. Bingo! <laughs> the Dolphins. Yeah. The show. Even though, just like when Foxy talks about the Lions, nobody gives a fuck. I mean, we're talking tanking of the ratings. So yesterday, whenever I found out that the Dolphins had better odds to win the AFC East than the New England Patriots, I was dumbfounded almost. And then it even led me to believe if there's that much distrust going on with Tua from the owner, allegedly. Now, the Dolphins Twitter did tell me that that's all bullshit and I need to pay closer attention to what's real and what isn't real. It's like, okay, well, when there's smoke, there's fire. In this particular case, there was like five people reporting that there was smoke in this particular thing with a quarterback that has 26 allegations and might get three life sentences in punishment if it ends up being a criminal trial as opposed to a civil trial which isn't anywhere near over whatever the case i just thought to myself it's really hard to win an nfl game when everything's going right let alone when there's potential distrust going on now i might have been wrong in that dolphin sort of did tell me that but i got into it and i did not know that the dolphins fans had this much passion I did not know that they had this much loyalty. I said that there was 10 to 15 Dolphins fans on Twitter that I was getting into. Mm -hmm. No joke. I undershot that a little bit. (laughs) I apologize for that. We will be sure to cover the Dolphins on this show. Every game, every single week. And let's just see and hope that they prove me wrong in thinking that there's a chance they end up third or fourth in the AFC East this year, just one year removed from when it looked like they're on their way up. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily a shot at the Dolphins, by the way. I think that's just mostly me thinking, like, Belichick's still Bill yep. Belichick. Right? Right. Right. That's right. Yep, correct. He's He's got a quarterback that looks eerily similar to the previous quarterback when it comes to throwing. We don't know what's in Mac Jones' ears. Only the next 20 years will be able to tell us if he's lucky enough to last that long. Josh Allen's still Josh Allen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Bills are still the Bills, right? So whenever you start piecing those things together, it looks like it's going to be a long road for the Dolphins, but their fans, I enjoyed the interactions with them last night being 100% serious, and I did not know they had that type of fan base because it hasn't been since 1984 that they won the AFC Championship. Wow. 1984, it's been a long time. I appreciate the fact that they've been this loyal and this passionate, and it was awesome getting to chat with them. But if they stink this year, we will cover it. And if they're good this year, we will cover it. I mean, that's what last night proved to me. Uh, At Boston Connor, I had no idea that Dolphins fans were this passionate, this loyal. I actually have the utmost respect for it, and I like a good give and take with people, but I didn't know the Dolphins fans had it like that. Well, that's the thing, Pat. They don't. Uh, And I'm (laughs) sure that the 10 to 15 of what you were referencing to were possibly the 10 to 15 that are that passionate. They come out of the weeds every once in a while because they won 10 games last year. They think, oh, we're on the up and up. Last year, to your point, we were massive fans of B Flow. Loved everything that he was doing down in Miami. They were actually in it till week 17, so it was something that we continue to talk about. But 
pulling Tua, all that nonsense. That type of thing kind of hindered our thoughts on what the hell is going on in Miami. And Charles Robinson actually came on this week and said, hey, if you don't, don't want to believe me, don't believe me. But this is real. Sorry, Dolphins Twitter. This is what Houston's doing. This is Miami is in this. So I apologize for breaking your hearts, but they're looking at Deshaun Watson. I love that their fans have Tua's back, by the way. Tua needs that. Yeah. Yeah. I wish the Dolphins organization would do that. You know what I mean? Yes. And by the Dolphins organization, I mean, allegedly, the owner has come out and said, fuck this guy. I want mm-hmm. that guy who might not be able to play for mm-hmm. the next 15 years, depending upon what's happening. I just, I don't think I truly appreciated Dolphins fandom until last night. And I want to let you know, we will cover the, cover that team now. Okay? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Heavily. I, I, heavily. And I hope... I hope they're good because I fear the things that I will say mm-hmm. about this Dolphins Twitter fan base that I got into it last night. If they show some signs of suck, especially after the success that they showed last year where it was almost their time. Hey, the 72 Dolphins popping bottles being the only true display of happiness that the Dolphins have had forever. They lost Finkel. They lost Einhorn. They lost goddamn Snowflake. The only thing I hope is for these Dolphins fans that the Dolphins are good this year. It's good for the NFL when Miami has a team that's great, but it's been a long damn time since that has happened. I think Gumpy would even say it seems like there was a couple steps forward and then almost every single time there's a couple steps back. Yeah. Maybe this is the breakthrough year for them, but the AFC East is no fucking laughing stock at this point. I mean, we're talking about a very dominant division with the two at the top being a real problem at this point. And listen, it's 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 Tua for that t- that team. He and a lot of people's critique of him is that he doesn't throw the ball down the field. Last year he was 31st in the league in in yards per pass as far as distance, but he's he's got Waddle, he's got Will Fuller. He's got Devonte Parker. He's got Kaseki. Like if if what or if if Tua doesn't do it, then I mean it's on Tua. I think with this team. No, yeah. Well, Tua, this is the first time he's really being handed the team, though, too, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is last year was Fitz Magic squad, and it was that way all the way through. He was a rookie. I actually enjoyed the fact that Tua had somebody to watch, like Fitz Magic, who's been on fifteen different teams. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. You can see how to interact with the coaches, with the GM, with your teammates, with the media, everything like that. Then wherever the transition happened, two was still playing. I guess he won six and three last year, I was told last night. But there was obviously those numerous times where he was pulled in key situations and they put Fitz back in there. I think Tua is going to be great. I actually at one point said that because of Tua, Alabama, you know, might have a chance against like an XFL team. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's right. I, like, because of how impressive Tua was as a quarterback, so I hope he does well. Uh, but Dolphins Twitter and I last night had some epic moments. I mean, I fucking love it. You know, I, I loved yeah. it. It was like it was like five years ago on Twitter for me. Mm-hmm. You know, last night I got a chance to go in there. I backed off a little bit. I think they backed off a little bit, which was very nice. I think we came to a common respect. Then this morning, all the Johnny Come Lately Dolphins fans tried to hop back in there. I didn't give them the time of day of burying them. A couple guys got it last night, some ricochet shots. I do apologize. Uh, But I love that the Dolphins have a fan base. I do love that. I mean, I absolutely enjoy the hell out of that. Well, and that's what I didn't understand with, like, the maliciousness of it is because yesterday, like, that is what you – I mean, you weren't taking a shot at Tua. It was like, hey, the Dolphins have kind of mismanaged him up to this point. You Yes. Like, you know, I mean, they they go away from Fitz Magic too early. He clearly still had something going on with his hip last year. I don't think he was 100% healthy. And whether you want to believe the bullshit from the owner or not, like – he still has to wake up every day and see, like, oh, okay, I thought I was going to be the starter this year. Now the owner's saying, like, no, we want to go get the guy who might go to jail for the next 150 years. Like, so if they would have managed the situation a little bit better, maybe you go into this season <laughs> with Tua and you're not thinking, like, oh, Jesus Christ, it feels like the, the sky's falling already. I like – I just like – I don't know. Like, I enjoyed the hell out of that last night. <laughs> yeah. I felt alive. You know what I mean? I felt alive in there. I was scrolling through random people's Twitter accounts, looking for photos. A lot of them didn't have photos of themselves. A couple poor slaps did, so I had to do my <laughs> thing. It really was what I used to do on Twitter all the time. Can't really do it as much because normally, you know, the little bitches of the world go, oh, this is real professional. It's oh, real classy. Yeah. And to be fair, the Dolphins fans, 
I mean, they it was good heel baby. I mean, it was good scrap last night on yeah. Twitter. I, I got nothing but respect for the Dolphins fans. Uh, some breaking news for the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, we do cover the Indianapolis Colts, mostly because they have a roster that can really go on a run, I think, in the AFC. T.Y. Hilton got surgery on some discs in his neck. He will be out, uh, everybody's saying, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, to start this season. We don't have a lot of weapons, uh, that proven weapons, I should say. We have a lot of people that are playing wide receiver and weapon positions that have the potential to be great. And I have the utmost faith in Chris Ballard, uh, Michael Strahan. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., Paris Campbell's healthy, wearing the one. Hopefully they'll all be able to remain healthy while T.Y. Hilton gets back. But losing your best weapon at the beginning of the season or your biggest, brightest weapon at the beginning of the season, you just paid a $10 million one-year lease uh, to keep in town. Not good. He'll be back, they said, sooner than later after that surgery. Carson Wentz, who had COVID-19 uh, close contact, he was out for a few days. He's back practicing today, 10 days from the opener. Ryan Kelly, number 69 overall player in the NFL, voted on by the Players Center stud out of Alabama. He's back practicing. And, I mean, right now, Quentin Nelson's back practicing, I believe. All things are looking up, but the Colts have been an absolute roller coaster. But it has been some good breaking news this morning out of Indianapolis Colts land. Yeah, with the O-line, with the running backs, and the fact that Carson Wentz is used to throwing to quarterbacks, has to make you feel good that he'll be able to go get it done even though T.Y. Hilton isn't on the field. You said he, Carson's used to throwing a quarterback? Yeah, I believe Greg Ward was the guy. Was that his name in Philadelphia mm-hmm. who they put out there at wide receiver? Houston quarterback. Yeah, Houston quarterback. They put a couple of different schlubs, and we can't forget he had a rugby player playing right tackle who apparently came on at the end of the season, but he's definitely not as good as Ryan Qu- uh, Kelly, Quentin Nelson, the boys. I appreciate these fans losing their mind for like average players because they're like super loyal, but – if you're in the NFL, you're a good football player. Yeah. Okay, let's never get that twisted. I have the utmost respect for everybody that plays in the NFL. I think you're really good. But there are some teams that it feels like they are not even in the conversation or contention to make a real run. But right now, with one week out, every fan base feels as if they got a chance. And that is not their fault, by the way. Joe Thomas <laughs> told us on this show that every year – He bought in and thought that there was a chance they were going to win the Super Bowl that year because he had to. He won two games in a span of like four years. (laughs) Greatest tackle of all time. So right now we're living in the most beautiful time to be a fan in the NFL. Everything is still out there. Hope, optimism. This player is going to burst onto the scene, even though they haven't for the last three years. This player is going to become a superstar. This player still has everything that they had in them years ago, what made them a household name. This is a beautiful time to be an NFL fan, and that's all I could think of last night as the Dolphins fans are coming after me is we got nothing but – Jesus. Oh. <laughs> we got about 10 days. Okay, we got about 10 days for all these fans to have all these hopes and dreams and everything like that. That first week can tell a lot, but we have to remember we have no idea what any of these teams are going to be until about week five, week six. Mm-hmm. And we got to remember that gambling wise, too. Oh, yeah. We might take some shots early, betting on some games and on some teams and get our hearts broken. We just have to take those notes early in the season and then run with that shit for the rest of the season. We're going to find out who's real and who's not. And it starts 10 days from now, seven days from now with the opener, but we won't fully know until a month, month and a half into the season what teams are what. Yeah, ideally, I think, believe we've said it on this show a few times, you would you would wait until after the first quarter of the season to see what teams are like to start betting on them. But none of us have that ability. We will just no. go all in the first four weeks yep. mm-hmm. and lay the chips as they may. And a lot of us lose a lot of credibility those yeah, first we couple do. weeks. Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Sure. Yeah, a lot of us lose a lot of credibility those first couple weeks. You know, and if you hit a bet the first couple weeks, you're probably more lucky than anything yeah, at that, yeah. that particular point. The NFL, because you're dealing with men and adults and strategy and scheme and coaches and everything, and there's millions of dollars being sent – Normally, you can find out what a team is, but it's going to take a little bit for them to find out who the fuck they are themselves. We have to remember that as we continue to get into this betting world here these first couple weeks. Last year, I think we said, write this down. Zito spoke into his phone. Hey, let's remember (laughs) first quarter of the season is tough to bet. Let's remember that. We have to think about that and not get too down on ourselves or too high on ourselves if we hit early on a season. Everybody agree? Yeah, absolutely. I do have. I think there are some teams like, hey, we know who they are. Like Bucks, Chiefs, Packers, Texans, maybe just the Texans down there. Yeah. Everyone else will see who they are. So, like, maybe avoid betting on like Panthers, Falcons, week two. Like, bet on the teams you think you have a pretty good idea because they've been the same for the last few years and their and their team is basically the same. 
Yeah, I think veteran teams, you can oh, yeah. you can normally count on, right? But even the Patriots, they'll lose a game in the first couple mm-hmm. of weeks. Mm-hmm. This is back whenever they were the greatest team in the history of professional sports, and people would write, write them off. Chiefs, that Chiefs game oh, with yeah. Alex Smith, mm-hmm. that opening week, is maybe the best depiction of that. I mean, that year, didn't you guys go on to win? Uh, that was after 2016, I believe, so we went to the Super Bowl, lost the Eagles. But that's still made it to the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. And after that first week, everybody's like, oh, this team is the worst team ever. This is when the Patriots are dead. And they, they were writing off the Patriots, obviously, every single year. We all were hoping that the Patriots were dead every single year on 31 of the fan bases. But that's what we have to remember going into these first couple weeks. Like, hey, none of these teams are anywhere near where they're going to be, okay, or where they're heading, both for good and for bad. But to your point, Diggs, this is the first time it feels like there are two veteran teams that are very good that were in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl last year who have their eyes on a much bigger prize than just making it back to the playoffs into the Super Bowl. It feels like that undefeated thing has been talked about a lot more. We talked to Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey says, like, who isn't trying to win every fucking week? And yeah, it's like, yeah. valid. Okay, but whenever you phrase it as, oh, they're trying to go undefeated as opposed to, hey, they want to win every single week. It's just two different narratives, two different stories. But it feels like Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs potentially on a revenge tour. First time they ever had to really, you know, stare down some criticism on them, maybe not being as great as we all think they're actually going to be. I'm not saying we did that. I'm just saying people did that. Then the Bucks, Tom Brady, he came out on a live stream on the NFL's platform and said, I would give up a ring or two to have the undefeated season back that the Giants took. I mean, so you have to think about those two things whenever you got these two teams going into their first couple weeks as well. It's like maybe they're fucking going for it, and maybe there isn't like a, hey, we need to learn process. Go ahead, Ty. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but I think you were the one who said like, hey, you know, because we don't really know what what you were doing is looking at teams with veteran, good veteran quarterbacks and saying, hey, this might be a team that like their team – over in terms of points is like a good bet yeah. the first couple weeks of the season because you knew that like you know guys like Rodgers and Brady and Russell Wilson guys like that they're going to put up points no matter what I think my favorite bet in it I think they they stopped doing it it was a live second half over mm-hmm. bet mm-hmm. and if you have a great offensive coordinator in a great offense and a great quarterback I just always assume at halftime they're going to fucking figure it out. Mm-hmm. So whatever the sports books are betting and thinking they're going to score in the second half, I'm betting on Aaron in LaFleur more than I'm betting on the defense in the second half. That's a bet that I love. That is a bet that you can look at. And I don't want to say like kind of cherry pick off, of, right. but it is. It, there is a couple of cheat codes that we'll be able to find in these first couple of weeks, especially with how FanDuel has 7,000 fucking bets. Yeah. yeah. There are so many bets there, and I appreciate the fact that Gumpy has been in his COVID cave, and he's still hot. Just like the reason why Hammered Down happened, by the way, is because Tone Diggs came out of the COVID cave as the greatest better of all time because all he did was just look through the sports book and find these great bets. And it's like, hey, Tone, I love you on this show. I enjoy our conversations together. But you're making us all a lot of money when all you do is just stare at that sports book. <laughs> yeah. How do you make that a profession? Boom, Hammered Down becomes a daily show. I mean, that is – that is literally how this business operates, by the way, for everybody that's watching and listening. <laughs> and now that Gumpy has that same situation potentially happening, I feel like we're in for a good one. We just have to make sure we find the bets that sports books don't want or that Fandle doesn't want us to find. And that's why we got the fucking cowboy oh, yeah. and the Dolphins fan, Canadian Gumpy, <laughs> sniffing around, snooping around like Toucan Sam looking for fucking Fruit Loops in that Fandle <laughs> sports book. Hey, Pat. Think about the Bucks because we talked about the Chiefs and they have a new O line, so we'll have to see what that is. But the Bucks won the Super Bowl, bring back every single starter. They have A B for a full season they didn't have last year, Fournette for a full season, O J Howard comes back off of injury, Vita Vey comes back off of injury. Has there ever been a Super Bowl team that's like, oh, we have everyone back and more? Yeah, and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. <clears throat> I don't know how they did it. I mean, this is when you get all these vets that understand what's going on, too. I think they all understand what's going on. We got Tom Brady as a quarterback. We're living in Florida. It's beautiful down here. We got no state taxes. <laughs> we got a coaching staff that is also vets that have been around. They don't, they don't want to fuck this up either. We'll take a little bit of a pay cut. We'll slide the bonus. We'll do this thing. 
They haven't figured it out. I mean, Tampa Bay Buccaneers figured it out on paper. Mm-hmm. Now, will they be able to flip the switch like they did for that last half of the season after the bye week, after they beat Atlanta in the second half, then they go into that bye week, then they change everything and they get what the hottest team in the NFL. The run game starts going when playoff Lenny gets put in there, when Ronald Jones had that foot injury or whatever. The defense started humming. They signed all their studs back on that side of the ball. Will they be able to pick up right where they left off? Or will there be a little bit, because they are vets, understanding like, hey, football doesn't matter. You don't want to start out too high. You don't want to be too hot. You don't want to be the team that peaks early and not late. I mean, there's all that shit you can think about, but you have to assume that that team understands their shelf life. That team understands what they have the capability of doing. And I'm sure B.A. and that coaching staff down there is saying, hey, we have a chance to be something that no team other than those 72 fucking Dolphins were able to be if we show up every single day. With Tom Brady in the building, it's going to be hard to believe that they won't do that. But, man, sometimes you, the game of football can humble. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, sure. Any given Sunday is a real thing. There's a chance that some team could upset them. There's a chance that we could lose a bet. Five, six weeks in a row yeah. when you bet on the Kansas City Chiefs because the Chiefs <laughs> just decide to flip the switch late and only win by one or two when everybody expects them to win by fucking 30. So, I mean, we just have to keep all these things in mind. Let's get to a break. Um, Ian Rappaport will be joining us on the other side. Yeah. He's in that area, though, that got hit hard with storms last night. Oh, mm. true. He's and P's to everybody in New York. I saw some disgusting flooding going on oh, around yeah. there. The subway... <clears throat> The rats, the houses, the city, T's and P's to everybody. I could not imagine having to deal with that on top of everything else going on in the world. Just want to let you know, we will continue to be the dancing climbs on your screen or in your radio. And we're very, very thankful to do so. Same with New Orleans and Hurricane Ida coming through down there. We, were, we appreciate everybody for listening and hopefully taking a mental vacation. Ian Rappaport will join us on the other side of this break with the rap sheet wrap up in friends. Okay. Uh, yeah. What we should all know what's going on in the NFL behind the scenes before next week is official NFL season kickoff week. Uh, we're back in about four minutes. We also have AJ Galante on the show yes. today. Yeah. Yeah. Manager of the Dansbury Trashers and. That sack of shit, Ariel Helwan. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. AJ Hawk will join us as well as your phone calls on the 5-Hour Energy phone line. one 833 4 McAfee. We'll see you in four minutes with Ian Rappaport. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, Mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire game if you look at other team sports uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court I think you've seen multiple players over the years Uh, maybe one player maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, 
and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. Show on Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82. Welcome back to that show. I'm Lorenzo Ramon. <laughs> Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. We are one week away from the NFL season officially kicking off. Until then, we got college football galore. Sports are all the way back. We'll be off tomorrow. But we are back on Monday. Yeah. I'll be in studio on Monday. Hey, I can't yeah. wait to get back in there with the boys and feel your energy and feel your vibe. I've missed the hell out of all of you. Joining us now is a man who has all the inside information that we need. Uh, Zito is actually calling him as we speak. He is in the area where there has been terrible storms, so I appreciate him immensely for giving us some time today to chit-chat. We'll ask him about that, obviously, but a man who's an insider for the NFL.com, the NFL Network. He's a host of a show that's been canceled, oh. Rap Sheet and Friends. We're not happy about it because we consider him a friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah! What's up? What's up, dude? Hey, so sorry about all the fucking storming over there, dude. I've seen some videos. It looks crazy. Is everything all right with the fam and everybody? Yeah, we got very lucky. Um, I would say, like, minimal, you know, probably minimal flooding in our basement. Some, but our neighbors, there's neighbors who are much worse. We are just driving around a little bit now to go get something. And there's a field that used to be a field that is now just a lake. Like it is, I'm not going to complain. We are extremely lucky, and thank you. Hey, is this, this isn't normal, right? I feel like a lot of the videos I've seen coming out of the subway and then there's people floating around Manhattan right now hitting bongs on rafts and there's cars that are being floated and you said there's field. Is that normal? Over, this is not normal, right? This is very out of the norm for the area you guys live in over there? I mean, I've never seen anything like this at all. I mean, we'll get like big snowstorms, but this apparently is like a once in 200 year, uh, once in like 200 year storm and you know, it's it's also weird because you know, obviously, like, I I have plenty of friends in New Orleans and uh, and other areas where you know they have hurricanes, and I I feel for them, and it's always terrible every every time it happens. I've never had to sort of worry myself for it, uh, and I I did not like it, and I have much more empathy now for people who get hit with like real serious storms. Like it is not pleasant, man. Not fun at all. Well, I want to let you know we're happy to hear you're okay. Uh, please let your friends know and everybody that. We send nothing but positive spirits to hopefully get this thing dry and quick on the other side of this and hopefully no more bullshit. Ian, we are one week away from the NFL kicking off Tampa Bay and Dallas. Yeah! 
I know that means that your golf season is over and you're actually going to have to do some work. What are some things you're keeping an eye on as we go into this last week before the NFL season kicks off? I think it's fascinating that GM scouts and roster builders have an extra week basically to look at their team, look at the waiver wire and continue to mold their roster. Is that what you're keeping an eye out for at this point or what are you looking at going into the week? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you're right about my golf season. It's, you know, sad but true. I did play Beth Page Black on Wednesday, shot an 89. I'm not bragging. That's just what it was. How many mulligans? Uh, no mulligans. The only thing, I would say, the only sort of, like, thing that happened was there was one time I hit the ball in the rough, so I knew it wasn't lost, and the rough was so thick, I literally couldn't find it. So I'm like, I would give myself a free drop because it's not actually lost. I just can't find. I, is that cheating? I don't know. Now, who has the time? Who has the time? Honestly, if you know a ball isn't OB, okay? Like, if I know a ball isn't OB, but I know it's in this area, I'm not going to spend the next 12 minutes, okay? I'm just yeah. I'm going to put a ball down. Now, the real golfers, and if there's money on the line, they're not happy about that. Yada, 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 get off my ass. But I don't have the time. You shooting an 89 breakfast ball or no breakfast ball? No hey, you're a golfer. Wow. Good for you. Look at yeah, you. I know. I will say a lot of times I don't play that well, but this time I happen to. So uh, it was a great day. Anyway, um, I so much of what happens in the NFL season is based on precedent, like off season. Like, okay, you know, every March is free agency, every April is draft. I honestly don't know what's going to happen from here the next five days because there are still some trades that yeah. I sort of thought might happen and didn't happen. Some moves that I was looking for. Um, like I thought Zach Ertz might get traded from the Eagles, and it sounds like he's not. Uh, the Saints have been looking for a corner. Um, maybe they sign one, and does the extra three or four days help them with that? Um, Cam Newton is currently unemployed, as you may or may not have heard. Does this little extra window allow teams to do more research on him and maybe bring him in, even though he's not vaccinated, because you now, you know, you would have the five days to do it, like, it's a little more time to tinker and do some things. Um, but, I mean, I would say the best thing is, you know, we sort of talked back and forth about COVID and, like, there were some times that got dicey. Like, the season's starting and we have made it. Um, so all that is very good. Yeah, that's a hell of a celebration there, that last sentence you said. And we're all very happy about it, especially those of us whose lives depend upon talking <laughs> about the NFL every day. It's nice that we don't have to talk about bullshit anymore, yeah. but we are still living in the drama bullshit world. There has been numerous reports. Yahoo Sports, Charles Robinson came on our show out of his car with two dogs in the backseat to tell us that there are teams still interested in the Houston Texans, including the Miami Dolphins, who I'm a big fan of all of a sudden. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of the Miami Dolphins. Is that real? Is there anything into that? Is that going to happen before the season starts, or is that all a bunch of bullshit like the Dolphins' Twitter was telling me last night? Well, I mean, there were definitely teams that explored trading for Deshaun Watson. I would say, you know, it's no one's crazy. The Miami Dolphins were one of them. I think there were several other teams, and we've talked about this over the last couple months, um, teams that explored, like, look, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL is available in a, a time when – you you know rarely are 25 year old franchise quarterbacks available and obviously the off season uh, off the field stuff is the reason why somewhat Deshaun Watson vowing to not play for the Texans wanting a trade obviously a big reason as well there are several reasons why he's available but teams owe it to themselves to explore if you could upgrade a quarterback you have to do it you have to look into it so the teams we talked about you know the the Eagles the Panthers maybe the Broncos maybe the Dolphins like Yes, those teams had to explore it. And I, there were times, I would say this offseason, where I, I thought, okay, maybe a trade could happen somewhat soon. And, you know, then we got word, along with Tom Pelissero, um, I got word that it was not going to happen before 4 p.m., the, uh, you know, the roster cutdown deadline. And then it's like, well, that was a big deadline. That was basically the deadline before the season. That means he's on the 53-man roster. Unless I'm crazy, I don't get a sense of what happened before the season now. I mean, barring some sort of dramatic turn. So then it's like, what do we do? Does he do basically the Texans play with 52 players all year? He sits out. He makes $10 million, They trade him in the offseason. Possible. Does he do an about face and actually want to play for them? That seems less likely. I would say he seems pretty dug in. It's honestly all really unprecedented and continues to be the most fascinating situation in the NFL.
Let's bounce around some other quarterback situations that had a little drama in the offseason, and now that we're a week away from kickoff, let's get a standpoint of it. Seattle Seahawks, everything's kumbaya up there? Everything's kumbaya up there? Is that how everybody's assuming it's going to go throughout the season as well, if there's success? Or is there still some questions on how that whole thing's going to turn out with Russ, Pete, and in that whole entire operation up there? I mean, for this year, it's all kumbaya, right? Everyone's all in on this year, all focused on the field, and that is good. And, and the, you know, the offensive coordinator that they hired – um, you know, that was someone Russell Wilson had a hand in choosing, right? So I would expect him – they're always going to focus on running the ball, but I would expect him to let Russ cook a little bit this year as well. Now, if it goes well, I think all is going to be great. If he's not protected, if he doesn't feel like the offensive line is great, if Dwayne Brown is for some reason not out there on the field when the season begins, then there will be some questions. Um, and then I think the focus will kind of be back on what is Russell Wilson's future in Seattle – they're all in on this year, but it is, I would say, a high-stakes year uh, in Seattle. But they're going to be good. They're always good. It's just sort of a question of how good. I think a lot of people forget because it's been so quiet over there, which is good news for Seahawks fans and Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, obviously. But at one point, the Chicago Bears made a trade offer in the middle of North Dakota, I guess, for Russell Wilson. That was turned down. They got bygones, bygones. Just a couple of days later, Andy Dalton was signed to the Bears, and the Bears fan base was obviously incredibly upset that they got Andy Dalton when they thought they were going to get Russell Wilson. Although Andy Dalton has played great football in a lot of places where he probably shouldn't have and won a lot of games, then they trade up to get Justin Fields. Now the conversation revolves around what are they going to do with that and Nagy and Pace have been very steadfast on the fact that they have a plan Andy's our guy Andy's our guy Andy's our guy Fields is there Fields mania is happening Fields is playing good football there's a lot of conversation around the pundits now that Pace and Nagy must feel a level of comfort with the Chicago Bears organization if they're going to be this patient putting in Justin Fields because if everybody assumed that they were going to get fired at the end of this year they would want to maybe go with the new guy let's see what we can do let's roll the dice as much as possible what are your feelings on the future for Pace and Nagy in Chicago and do you get the feeling that this is not definitely their last year they're going to be given some time here to uh, kind of execute their plan that they've had all along well if you look at the record I mean it's really they seem to be under fire and I know locally they're under a lot of fire but if you actually look at the record they've been pretty good they've gone deep into the playoffs like they've been somewhat consistent it never because they didn't have the quarterback position right it never felt just felt anecdotally sort of like a lot of success but the record is actually not bad and they're probably in more under more fire than they should be given the record uh, that said there's nothing more important than the quarterback position so you know, if Justin Fields is really good, then I think they are both going to be absolutely fine. Uh, if this is a struggle this year, if they're losing a bunch of games, if they, you know, finish five and twelve, five and twelve, or whatever, um, then I mean, yeah, it's a it's a big year. They could be in trouble. I would say this about Fields, right? Like Andy Dalton's going to start Week One. Beyond that, I think they are going to put Fields in if he is ready. And we've seen him in preseason. We don't know what's going to happen when real defenses are there. Um, if he's ready and if and when they need to, like need to, right? Because that's what we've seen. It's always a little earlier than we think. Um, but I have a feeling, as a football world, we will know when it's time to turn to Justin Fields. Like, they start two and three with Andy Dalton. He's been up and down. The fan base is crying for it. And it's like, okay, like let's go. It's Justin Fields' time. So that's – I think we are going to know when it's time. And – you know, by all accounts, he's been awesome in camp. Um, I hope that continues because, you know, if the Bears finally have their guy, I think that's, I think a lot of people will probably be happy, I would say. Watch Andy Dalton just become fucking Aaron Rodgers. This year. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. It'd be awesome. I'd be I so mean, happy would, for them. It would be great, though, because then you could actually allow Fields to just chill, just learn, maybe put him in in spurts. But, like, if, if Andy Dalton is Alex Smith when he was with the Chiefs, that's actually awesome. Like, it, you know, for those of us who want to see Justin Fields, I think you'd kind of be like, ah, we'll have to wait till another year to see him. But that would be really, really, that would be best case scenario. And then, you know, then Andy Dalton would go sign somewhere else to get a third round compensatory pick and they turn it over to the rookie and everything would be good. Those of us that want to see Justin Fields also probably the large majority are just Bears fans. And if they're winning and Andy Dalton looks good, I don't think anybody's going to compare or complain about that up there. You know, let's go to another quarterback situation of the offseason. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. 
in the Packers. Him and LaFleur, obviously, palling around. He posted on his Instagram stories last night. They said we wouldn't like each other. Mark Murphy actually said, hey, Aaron, don't be the problem. That offense last year looked unbelievable. The interesting situation with the Packers right now is Aaron Rodgers is only 3-4 and four or something like that when he plays in Florida. The New Orleans Saints decided to have the home game that they can't have in New Orleans in Jacksonville. That was allegedly taken into account. Is that real? And how do you go about picking a new stadium to play in if there's some sort of natural disaster like was that a was that an in-depth process where they had to call numerous stadiums or does the nfl yeah. all kind of have like a, a buddy buddy system like hey we got you if you need it well basically what they do is they talk to teams and they say like if something happens would your stadium be available like which weeks basically so i believe and i have to go back and check the schedules but i believe their options were jacksonville miami and atlanta um atlanta being willing to help out their um their old friends, the New Orleans Saints, was certainly a nice thing. Um, but, yeah, you know, I read the article from Jeff Duncan, who is very good, and I believe all of it. You know, the fact that they considered flights to Jacksonville being more expensive for Packers fans, meaning maybe Packers fans won't make the trip to Jacksonville, is honestly kind of hilarious. Um, and, you know, whatever. I mean, it should be a home game for the Saints, so they should get all the benefits from that. And if they made it a little harder for Packers fans to travel, like, Whatever. Um, I'm, I, I like I'm, here for, I'm here for all of the pettiness, I would say. Yeah, me too. I love gamesmanship. I love pettiness. I love everything about it, especially when you're dealing with billionaires trying to win over other billionaires who have the ability to do whatever the fuck they want at all times. I mean, it is a wild world that we're living in, but I can't wait for the season to start. Go ahead, Tone Diggs. Hi, Ian. How Good to see you. Um, see question. Steelers aren't going to let TJ Watt play this season without getting a new contract, right? I don't know. It is not wow. done yet. It has been a difficult negotiation. Um, you know, he's obviously going to be the highest paid defensive player in football. If he gets it done, uh, it's not there yet. And he hasn't practiced much. I mean, it is, look, that is a, that is a difficult situation. And I think everyone has been, you know, there's haven't been a lot of rumors about it. There's not much to say. It's not done. Um, does it get done? I honestly don't know. I mean, it is – with that organization, the way they structure the deals uh, without a lot of guaranteed money, I don't know. Um, it is it, – it's it's really tough to forecast these deals midway through because there are per, certain points where both sides are like, this is never happening, and then sometimes they happen. Um, this is a tough negotiation. So I hope for his sake they get it done and for their sake so they can reward one of the best players in football, but it's been difficult. So Colbert and Tomlin – Involved in that, right? Is that who is doing or is that mostly Tolbert? Or Colbert? Uh, mostly Colbert, yeah. Okay, I mean, I'm so sure Colbert. Tomlin wants it done, but, I'm, you know, this isn't – when you talk about money at this level, this is Art Rooney and this is Kevin Colbert. Okay, so, like, Joe Hayden just came out and said last dance, you know, he well, they weren't able to get a deal done. Are they not going to be able to get a deal done with any of those guys, you think? And then Mink is next on deck, right? And they're – what if they strike out on all three of those? Is that a sign, like, the Steelers are going to – move on like they always have by the way the Steelers are just like uh, hey we're not going to be the ones that are going to overpay people we're the ones that are going to move on is that what it's looking like like that defense could be no. very different here in a year or two no I'm not ready to go there yet I think for Hayden he's he's an older guy so I wasn't surprised that you know they didn't give him more guaranteed money you know Minka I mean, is a very good player and obviously very much in their plans but I think the focus is on TJ Watt first try to get try like absolute crazy to get that done uh, if they can't, you know, maybe they adjust and see if they can get Minka done. But uh, I know the focus is on T.J. Watt right now, and I think they would love to get it done. They just Go. have not yet. Go ahead, Ty. Ian, going into the season, it seemed like uh, Sh Kyle Shanahan basically already said that Jimmy G is going to be the starter. But then yesterday he told the media, I don't need to name a starting quarterback. And uh, very early on, it seemed like Trey Lance was really pushing to maybe start. Are we going to get just a two quarterback, like a two headed attack with them all season? Or is it going to be Jimmy G and then just a few packages here and there for Trey Lance? My Guess, just guess, is it's going to be Jimmy G and then a few packages for Trey Lance unless something goes wrong or Jimmy G starts not playing well. You know, Lance is also dealing with a, a little bit of a thumb injury, and I, the timeline is close, and I think Kyle Shannon yesterday admitted to reporters that it's probably a little more serious than the seven, minute, seven uh, days they said originally. So, you know, we'll see if, if Trey Lance is out there for week one. If he is, I think you'll probably see a couple packages, but – I haven't heard anything to tell me that it's anyone but Jimmy G as a starting quarterback. 
Okay, Jimmy G also. There might be a package where both quarterbacks are in there. I mean, let's mm. not get crazy. Oh, who is it? Whoa. You got any news? Uh, I don't know about news, but maybe a little insight. I actually got to go do some TV now in my uh, actual job, <laughs> uh, my other job. Well, we appreciate but. you. We can't wait to watch you. If you break any news, like minutes after you get off of here, we will have this urge inside of us to smack you right in the fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Just call me right back. Ladies and gentlemen, host of the Canceled Show Rap Sheet and Friends on NFL Network right now, Total Access. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rap. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hey, sorry about that, Connor. What were you going to ask him? Oh, I was just going to ask if he thinks it's wise that Mark Davis, while getting invested by the IRS, <laughs> just building a $14 million mansion. Yeah, so the Raiders are getting in, um, audited. I'm not sure that necessarily means Mark Davis is, but I assume they go hand in hand in that entire thing. Do we know about that IRS? I'm sorry we missed that. I'm sorry we missed that. Oh, we'll call him back. We'll call him back that's after he breaks some news. <laughs> that $14 million house that he's building over there in the middle of the desert looks absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does. It's wild. It looks beautiful. I mean, you're walking into a mall of a house, you know what I mean? I, I With that haircut, too, I'm sure there's a barber shop that's taking up that one right L. That's probably a barber shop <laughs> there. Uh-huh. It is haircut. The pool looks beautiful. I just... I do wonder what it's going to be like five years from now. Is Are the Davises still going to own the Raiders after the IRS says uh, what you guys did was kind of fucked up? I'm not sure. The IRS has taken down plenty of folk, mm-hmm. plenty yeah. of folk. And I'm not sure if uh, Mark Davis flexing on them with the house is the right move, but I think it's two separate entities. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, the Las Vegas Raiders presented to you by the IRS would kind of be a pretty <laughs> sweet team name, if you ask me. Hold on. Uh, Pitt just got a $20 oh, million. Dude. Pitch just got a $20 million donation from a guy named Bickle who graduated in 1997. The head coaching title is now the Chris Bickle of 97 head football coach. <laughs> Bro, I love this. I, I hope to one day get to the point where I can just shell off 20 mil and say, hey, by the way, the head coach is now the Pat McAfee head coach. <laughs> Pat, FAU did it for two and a half million. Yeah, Rocket Mortgage, by the way, they did it for Michigan State for the entire fucking team. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, Foxy, we have not talked about that because Michigan State hasn't done anything surprisingly, both, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, notorious or okay. anything right. yeah, you, infamous or you, you get it. But yeah. the Spartans are the, presented by Rocket Mortgage. Yes. Right? The basketball team, not the football team. Oh. Oh. Yes. Izzo. Smart by Rocket Mortgage saying we're not being associated with that fucking Slap dick football team. Uh, <laughs> they're on the bounce back this year. Uh, big 10, big night tonight. Yeah. I mean, big night tonight. What if Minnesota, the Gophers, fucking surprise Ohio State, who has a new quarterback, new everything, right? There's a chance. Yeah. This is the only time, really, that somebody might get Ohio State. And I'm not, I'm not like a big Buckeye fan. I mean, I've been a part of a couple of their cult events now, and True. I've got a chance to really experience their cult of fan base. But it feels like they're just a fucking factory over mm-hmm. there in the Big Ten. Everybody's trying to keep up, right, Ty? Yeah, absolutely. To your point, though, with Minnesota, you know, usually early in the season like this, snake oil still fresh in the veins. So, you know, uh-huh. it hasn't worn off yet. So they might come out hot and fiery and, and, and surprise some people. PJ used to be a friend of the show. Used you to remember be. that? Yeah. yeah. The neck time mentality. Great speech. And, and then – he was supposed to come on one day and his people were like, please don't ask him to give a motivational speech. It's like, well, what the fuck are we having PJ Fleck on? <laughs> hey, when he was coming on the show, I believe they went 10 and 2. Uh, he doesn't come on it, and last year they fall apart. So. Oh, no. oh. I just don't do well when people tell me what to do. You know, that's what I feel like I'm realizing. It's been this way my entire life. Diggs got to see it firsthand in school. It was the same exact <laughs> way all the way back to like third, fourth, fifth grade. So I had to immediately cut ties with P.J. Fleck, even though I enjoyed him. I enjoyed the Minnesota Gophers facility. I enjoy their team. Uh, tonight we learn a lot, though, about Ohio State, what they're going to look like this year. Let's assume that there's a whole new batch of five stars mm-hmm. ready to carry the yeah. Buckeye to another Big Ten title. But the Minnesota Gophers just two years ago were in national title prominence conversation. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch some football tonight and this weekend. We're seven days away from the NFL. A.J. Hawk is in hour two alongside A.J. Gallant. We'll see you in six minutes. The NFL is implementing 
the Hawkeye replay system, which has the smart technology, which is synchronized multi-angle replay technology, which allows the ref to view all of the shots and angles of a certain play at the same damn time, as opposed to what they've been doing all along, which is TV producers deciding what replays they see when. Are you kidding me? What? Unbelievable. What? Now, we know a lot about these TV producers, okay? Yeah. I couldn't see Joey Josh Chestnut eat his 76th fucking hot dog, all right? Bullshit. On 4th of July to break his own record because of a production. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of other rather terrible decisions made in television and broadcasting of games made. Those same people now I'm learning were the people that were deciding what angles the 95-year-old refs in the NFL were going to see. This is absurd. Thankful that the XFL, who had the Hawkeye smart technology, synchronized multi-angle replay technology, either created, invented, or used from other places, like tennis has this, mm -hmm. I believe. I like that we're expediting the replay system. I like that we're getting up with the times. Replay should be an asset to the NFL as opposed to what it is, which seems to be a burden. The the pass interference replay thing, because of how terrible they botched the execution of that, it probably will never be brought up or you know thought about again because fans will be able to say, oh, remember when they did that last time? It was like, no, remember how they executed that last time? The replay system is run by people who have you know, not a lot of experience with maybe quick, slow-mo, uh, fast forward, maybe just content being in their face all day, every day. I like that we're making this better. It's better for the game. It's better for everybody. There's a lot of money on the line. Let's not let a opportunity pass where we can utilize technology to make sure the right shit gets done. Let's just do it in a much more efficient fashion. I've always felt that way, AJ. Well, it's much more efficient, but it also, it makes me question, like, how did we go this long to where oh. a TV producer is controlling what replays, yeah. what angles yeah. you're gonna see, like for the referee, like that, that that kind of blows my mind when you think about it. Yeah. I read it yesterday and I almost, uh, I almost axled my pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't because I'm an adult, but you get it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I bet you you have in the last five years. No, I haven't. But I had. Uh, uh, there was that one time where I thought it was going to be a sound, and it was actually action. <laughs> yeah, a little close. Yeah. That's a different story, yeah, though. Yeah, but, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was a full axle, I don't think. Yeah, no, no, sharding is not you pooping. You didn't step in it. Well, well, I have a little cooth huh, for the goddamn good of the show. But speaking of that, I was quite alarmed whenever I read that. That TV produced, I'm like, the same people that are making a lot of the decisions that we get a chance to witness every single week are the same people that are deciding whether or not a play that I have a lot of money riding on potentially is overturned or not. I am not about that. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the, uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody done came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey man, did you do this? Like, oh no. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, yeah, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, 
Oh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your Ain't former no teammates. <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just the line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name fact was that he Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to. It. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh boy, I've been looking for you. You <laughs> saying? Okay. Yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
Studio. I, I don't, yeah, they did actually. I didn't see. I don't know what Brady was doing. I don't think he was on it. Brady quit. Brady does whatever, whatever Brady Quinn wants to do. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe his schedule didn't allow it, or he said, "Now nah, I'm good. I don't need to go for week zero. How about Chopper going? Hey, Brady, don't fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brady, don't be doing fucking. Hey, we don't do anything. That's week zero, pal. All right. I mean, I remember one time I was a part of a uh, conference call, a corporate conference call, and the uh, one Those of the departments, fun. one of the departments spoke, and they said, "We have completed phase zero. We are now on to phase one, and I have never asked a question in one of those corporate conference calls. That was the first time I ever said, can somebody elaborate that there's a fucking phase zero that we could? I mean, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Never got an answer. Got a pretty good pop from the room, but week zero is done. Now we're in week one. Let's go and do this thing. The Ohio State team, they're going to be good. Should I be betting on them? I guess they're minus 13 and a half, minus 14 and a half, depending on where FanDuel lay, lays at. How do you feel about this team? Are they are all signs pointing to us hammering them tonight? I mean, they should. They have the new quarterback, C.J. Stroud, is stepping in. They have, I mean, I feel like they have three or four, like four and five-star quarterbacks on the roster. So whoever's thrown in there seems like they could do a great job. The receivers, I guess they are some of the deepest like receivers in, in the country. They, they have a ton – of stud. So you would think they can score some points tonight. I don't know. I'm not sure about Minnesota. Who are they? What are they going to do? Who's that, Olive? Yes. Right? Chris yeah. is about yeah. to have a massive year. He was a freshman last year. Uh, no, not last year. I think this is third year. He's probably. I think he's draft eligible after this year. Who was – there was a guy last year who was a freshman maybe that made this Olave, insane yeah. – What's is that him? He's the guy. Oh, are you thinking Garrett Wilson or Olave? There's, I mean, there's a lot They're of both. them right now. Think I'm not sure. I saw a catch last year out of a guy who I thought was a freshman. I might have been wrong. Maybe he's a redshirt freshman. Maybe I don't. Garrett know. Wilson is a sophomore now. Yeah, I think. Okay, it was so old. it was him. He's filthy. That dude's yeah. hands and feet are hey, tight. Hey, um, the son, his son is there too. Peyton's old target, Hall of Famer, Marvin. Marvin Harrison. Oh, Marvin Harrison's son is a freshman, right? Yeah, I don't. I assume he's going to play. I don't know what the plan is for him, but I know he's a stud as well. Does it feel good? To have it like at West Virginia, I don't think I know any of the players on the team, I, and I don't live, I don't live in Morgantown. I wish I did. I wish I followed the process more. I appreciate if they're good. I'd be very thankful if they won a bunch of games. That'd be cool. They're in a conference that's about to fucking break, just like the Big East. I mean, now would be the time for West Virginia to win it, by the way, because then they'll just fucking tear down the entire conference. But is it cool to be and know that your team is just always going to be a factory? That has to be pretty sweet. I mean, I don't feel like it's. It, it always hasn't been like that. I don't feel like it was that way when I was there. I mean, we were good, yeah, but I feel like once – I mean, after I left, it seems like they, they don't lose to Michigan. They lose, like, one game every couple of years. Yeah, they – once you start, I guess, winning at that level, I think it, it doesn't recruit itself. The, the coaches will tell you they, they recruit their asses off. But, yeah, you, you should – your Ohio State should be on, like, the top three or five of every big-time recruit. I mean, Quinn Ewers has $1.5 million allegedly in name, image, likeness deals. So the coaches can recruit their asses off. Okay, I appreciate that. But whenever you go to Ohio State or Alabama or Clemson at this point, the recruiting is done by national television, right? I mean, it's on, they're on national TV every single fucking week. And everybody says, well, if you start paying the players, you start paying the players, it's going to hurt the recruiting process. It's like... Well, what about seeing a team on national television every single week with behind-the-scenes stuff showcasing their entire locker room every single day? Is that not helping recruiting as well, or are we just kind of blind to that? And like, oh, no, no, no. That, they earned that. They deserve that. It's like, all right, get the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm excited for where college football is headed, but I don't think any of us have any idea, right? Nobody has any idea what it looks like five years from now. No. No. I, I mean, yeah, this it's so new, like the name, image, likeness stuff. It's It was funny to see. I mean, I probably said it on here where – all of a sudden, like, there's no name, image, or likeness, and then they passed it, and then five seconds later, I feel like I saw guys selling tires on the internet. Like, already, they already had this stuff in place. It was pretty quick. Hey, flipping O's. I'll tell you that. I respect that. <laughs> yeah. I got nothing but respect for that. Um, the Colts activate Carson Wentz, Ryan Kelly, and Zach Pascal back onto the roster after being held away in the reentry process of being a close contact to somebody that has COVID. Seems like that team's all the way back in the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, GM Ryan Pace and Andy has talked about Andy Dalton being the starter. They like Andy. There's really no new topics coming out of the NFL right now, except for the fact that we're seven days away, AJ. Oh, yeah. Seven days away. Yeah. Is Connor still as excited about the, uh, his quarterback Cam Newton, Newton being released. Like, are you still riding that high, Connor? Oh man, you, you riding no old Newty, dude? You have no idea. I got a bath talk coming later on, and people are not going to be too pleased about it. I'll tell you what. 
Hey, have you watched Bath Talk at all? Episode yeah, I, wouldn't, now, I mean, right? I have a lot of questions for Connor yeah. on that. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll so get Connor, it's better than you asking questions of fucking Mitt. All right? <laughs> well, that'll be later. Wait till after hours, get Mitt all primed up. So, Connor, <laughs> on hashtag Bath Talk, you, do you legit take a real bath or do you just get in there and then get out? Like, what? what is the, the process? Yeah, what do you mean I legit take a real bath? Yeah, there's not fake water in my tub. I hang out for a little. I mean, do you kind soap of... up and do you actually clean up or you just waste time in there and sit your no. dirty body in the dirty water? <laughs> See, exactly. <laughs> exactly to your point. You shower first, you clean your body off, then you fill the tub up. Then you lounge for a little bit, hang out, just kind of enjoy it. And then bath talk, you know, oh, comes see, after that. See, I do the opposite. Every NFL locker room has like, you must shower before getting into the bath or whatever. You must shower before getting in there. I don't think I've seen one person do that. I don't think I've seen <laughs> one person shower. You get into the bath. You hope you don't get any fungus or viruses. Then you go to the shower to rinse off all the shit afterwards. Oh, yeah. You're supposed That's to rinse off before you get in. You're supposed to rinse off all that stuff on your skin and body. Even if you don't use soap, just rinse off at least. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen anywhere. I try. I tried to do it, but I'll tell you what. I just didn't have the same drive to get into the cold tub after the shower every <laughs> single time. So I was like, you know what? I'm fucking getting in there. And then they can take a little sweat. And I'm going to take this Gatorade uh, towel. I'm going to dip it into the hot tub because Adam Vinatieri taught me this. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on the kit and caboodle too. So when I get in there, I'm going to put the rubber things on the toes so my toesies don't get too cold. Mm. And my balls are going to be good because that hot Gatorade towel and i'm gonna sit in there 12 15 minutes i'm gonna be back out of this thing tomorrow i'm gonna take a shower and rinse it off and that's all right okay there's a, that's not the right way to do it but that's what i do i appreciate the fact that connor goes shower then bath because that's what every nfl locker room is trying to make their players do uh gardner Minshew, now a member of the philadelphia eagles he was traded out of jacksonville to be a backup i assume for jalen hurts in philadelphia he said the last time and the only interaction he's had with sirianni is whenever he was getting interviewed by the colts and he and Sirianni ended up playing a game of horse where a shirt was lost in the middle of this entire thing. Uh, Minshew has said he's back for revenge. We've heard Sirianni say that he does rock, paper, scissors because he likes to see how these guys compete. Had no idea they were also playing horse. Your thoughts on Minshew, Sirianni, and the legend of that coach in Philadelphia only continuing to grow with every passing day. Okay, so where, where were they having this game of horse, this game of strip horse, I guess, right? Is that what they're talking about? Why was this shirt removed? I think it just got so competitive, it got a little hot in there. And, and okay. I think it's in a room. Everybody has like their own like room, conference room, right? I think, or maybe they get a hotel suite that they empty out. So it had to be just like little, you know, almost like Nerf ball or like mm. a uh, Fisher Price. A, yeah, Fisher Price thing. And the fact that Sirianni's got a jumper, maybe we need to keep him in a little bit higher regards at Ty Schmidt. What are your thoughts whenever you heard this story? Were you just absolutely psyched that you were gonna unload some horse jokes into your next Sirianni impression? Yeah, definitely, but uh, I mean, I was actually thinking about it, and I, I can't remember if it came out yet, but he actually said, you know, a lot, a lot of people think that Gardner is coming in to potentially compete with Jalen to be starting. He's not going to be on the 53-man roster. I brought him in to hone my competitive edge. <laughs> <laughs> by playing horse and stuff like that. And then it's just a bonus. I mean, we, he took he, he tops off. He looks like a Greek god. He is an Adonis. But I brought him in to help me hone my competitive edge and get those little intricacies and details down. He's not going to be challenging Jalen for the starting quarterback position this year. Uh, Gardner Minshew. What a fucking life, this guy. He gets drafted, what, sixth round? And when he gets drafted, Doug Marone says, we got our guy in the sixth round, and then he starts, has an incredible run. Obviously, the George, the mullet, the mustache, the headband. Jacksonville was all in. They were selling all this shit. Yeah. They had like the a mustache day, didn't they? Didn't they give yeah. away fake mustaches mm -hmm. one of the games? And I think they were giving away bandanas, too, or headbands. Yeah. And I mean, it was the Minshew mania was a real thing. And here we are a couple years later, obviously completely moved on. Last year, Mike Glennon beat him out for some spots, but Minshew's a baller. Minshew's a player going to bring energy. Does that help the Philadelphia Eagles get over that hump of disaster? It seems like they're currently riding. I mean, I guess we're going to have to find out. I guess we're going to have to find out. Yeah, Probably we'll not. I would It'll be that. fun for the, I guess he can hopefully improve your defense because if he's running the scout team <laughs> offense, like Gardner, Gardner is very dynamic. The dude can make all the plays and he seems to be super competitive. So I'm sure he's talking trash back and forth with the starting defense. So that could help your team. I don't know how much though. We'll see. AJ, have you thought about donating back to Ohio State to maybe get that head coaching role called the AJ fucking Hawk head coaching position? Have you heard about what Pitt did with Chris Bickle, class of 1997, University of Pittsburgh? Can I name the head coaching job? 
yeah, yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want and give us $20 million. You got it. I love this. Have you thought about getting into this donate and put your name on shit game that is happening all across college uh, athletics? Well, this it's normally for, like, buildings or rooms. Like, you go into Ohio State's facility. I know a guy, actually, who donates Epstein. a lot of money. And, what's that? <laughs> Epstein. Epstein? No, no. This guy's you know, he's all legit. He, he's uh, he's uh, never been to jail, from what I know. But uh, Whoa. he uh, he gives a bunch of money, and he his name is right outside the men's locker room. He's Or the men's bathroom, that's sick. Not even in the locker room. Outside, he's like, I want my name. Whenever anyone goes in there to take a dump, I want them to look at my name. They don't know me, but they know that name. And I was like, hey, man, you give them money. You can do whatever you want. Well, I so when I went down to University of Tennessee with Peyton one time, you know, we drove down Manning Way, and there was a picture of Peyton that was huge, and then the lockers and facilities or the Manning training facility or whatever it is with the amount of money that he's donated. But with Rocket Mortgage just deciding to take the name of the Spartans for the basketball team, this guy named the head coach thing, some other people have done it as well. These sponsorships are just getting to a point that I absolutely love. I mean, I cannot wait to see the shit that gets titled next. I, I, I could probably donate and just what make the kicking position after me. The, <laughs> oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the kicker for West Virginia is that like that is awesome. I love. How do they? Some but, point, okay, is it other than like the sign on the coach's office? Where else will this be? Like the announcers probably aren't going to say this, are they? they have to. Ask the coach? I think so. Okay. How, expo- how is it going to go? How, how is the announcer going to bring on the, the head coach? Then what's he going to say? Uh, the Chris Bickle, class of '97 head coach Pat, whatever, is not happy about what the coach <laughs> <are> doing. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're going to have to say that. That's like the. The Michigan Spartans presented by Rocket Mortgage are up five. Now we got yep. 10 seconds left in the Michigan Spartans presented by Rocket Mortgage. Have the ball. They're dribbling up, running a little weave man to man for the Michigan Spartans presented by Rocket Mortgage. That's what they're paying for, right? I believe so. In the articles, that's what it said. Man. That's okay. Dan Gilbert. He went to Michigan State. He's the founder of Rocket Mortgage. So he's like, yeah, screw it. I'm a billionaire. Let's just get my name in there. My company's name in there, at least. Hey, Dan Gilbert's had quite a ride. Remember, he was racist for what happened with LeBron. Then he won a championship with LeBron. And then now he's naming shit after himself with the coaching staff in the college. I mean, I love that guy. <laughs> he's the best. Isn't that crazy, though? He's a billionaire. He can pay players to go to Michigan State anything he wants. Like, I feel like none of this is going to make any sense these next couple of years. Yeah. He's going to so need much money. Going to need bumpers. Big time. Hey, what about Chris Bickle? Have we looked, who is this guy that can donate 20 mil? Like, who is, I, I want to know that. Yeah, and did he just potentially put himself into, you know, an investigation? Yeah. Because yeah. now we know that this guy has $20 million just to throw at the fucking name of a coach. You know, like, I think anytime you do anything like that, somebody is going to be like, where did that money come from? <laughs> and that particular people that are going to do the, Where'd that money come from? The IRS. Just like fucking Mark Davis. You see his new house he's building out there in Vegas, AJ? It is Sweet. A I want to go whenever it's done. I want to be out. Oh. I need an invite to the opening party. I hope his pool parties are like Bill Gates's. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope that we can really get after it. And Connor mentioned this earlier, but, you know, the IRS is auditing the Raiders for whatever it was, whether yeah. it's payment or hiding of funds, classic IRS auditing shit. Mark Davis... He's a completely different entity. That doesn't mean he's getting audited, right? I don't think I know enough about it. He's okay to do whatever he wants with his money, hide his money, however, until he uh, raises some alarms, right? Yeah, I would assume he he is like a separate entity, but I'm sure like, you know, the money is commingled between accounts. Like who knows where all that money, I have no clue how any of this works, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be bringing any extra attention to myself. I'm sure he's not doing anything wrong, but if you are getting audited and they're spending all this money to audit you, you would assume you're going to, have a hefty fine at least to pay. Yeah, and when they audit you, you know what you got to do? You got to freeze them out. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Put the room's temperature down to as cold as possible. Give them no jackets. Fucking make them get after it. I learned that from a wolf one time on Wall Street. Let's go to the five-hour energy phone line presented by Chris Bickle of 97. <laughs> <laughs> let's, go to, uh, let's go to Kenneth in Tennessee. What's going on, Kenneth? What's What's up, dude? Uh, taking the dog out now, getting ready for work. Got off work yesterday, saw you had a little Twitter war with the Dolphin fans. I was wondering, uh, when the fuck has Miami been relevant? <laughs> well, see, that's just like an easy way out. You know, like I, I could have said that to a hundred, literally a hundred different people on Twitter last night, but that's not the fans' fault. I like the fact that they are that passionate, though, for a team that has stunk for a long time. They look to be on the upswing, which is great, so maybe they're getting a little bit – 
over their skis. But I appreciated the Dolphins fans' give and take with me on Twitter last night, personally, Kenneth. What do you do for a living, by the way? You're getting ready for work now. Uh, right now, I uh, work at a factory building lawnmowers. Shout out, Cup Cadet, Brew John Deere. Number one globally. Suck it, Ty. Hang it up. Hang up. Stuck it, John Deere. Hey, Ken, we appreciate your work in that factory. Thank you for listening to us. We need people that do that in our society, and I'm very, very thankful for Kenneth uh, for listening. The Dolphins fans, though, AJ, it was awesome last night. I mean, it was fucking awesome. I haven't had that in a long time. I did not know they had that. I knew Gumpy was a fan. Didn't make much sense, though, because he's from North Left, and he likes the Red Sox and the Dolphins. But they have a contingency of fans who are ready for them to be good. I just fear that with the AFC East, the Patriots have owned it for so long, they just retooled, rebuilt, redid their whole thing, and Mac Jones is their guy going forward. It might be a miserable next, I don't know, 30, 40 years. I mean, it very well could be. I, I give their fans credit for standing up um, for them, but I, I have a feeling this isn't the last time that you guys will be going back and forth at each other on Twitter. But what happens if Tua struggles early? Like, what Then what do they do? Like what? Then you're really in a panic, I feel like. We're just going to cover it. Yep. Hey, we're yeah. just going to observe and report. That's all we're, we are going to do. Uh, I think that's all we are. Stern. But fair. Mm-hmm. That's right. This show. I got called Colin Cowherd and Skip Bayless last night. Hey, so thank you. Times. Thank you very much. That's what I would say. <laughs> I agree. Skip Bayless just got $8 million a year at the age of 90. I mean, I, yeah. I, hope, <laughs> I hope that happens. You know, and Colin Cowherd's been doing it forever at the top of the game, so it's very nice. But people were acting as if what I was saying about the AFC East not being like a cakewalk. In, in my eyes, with the drama surrounding the team – now, they're saying that that's not actually happening. It's just national media narratives that are all bullshit, and I need to do better research, and uh, maybe that's the case. I won't, but maybe that is the case. I should probably look into it a little bit more, I guess. But to be honest, third-place team in the AFC East, I'm not going to waste that much fucking time. Anymore. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can't. I, I am so sorry. I can't do that. But I guess Tua in the Deshaun Watson stuff is all a bunch of bullshit. It's Tua's team. I hope they do well. Uh, we are also put on top of a mountain. Okay, Cock Mountain, mm-hmm. which I don't necessarily love because I, I mean I appreciated that guy's artwork. It was incredible work. I didn't and I, I was gonna retweet it and I didn't want to broadcast it. I was trying to find a creative way to put that out there and try to say we, we need to take this down. I, I thank you for looking out for I laughed for very hard. I laughed very, very hard at it. And then he had Mount Cuckmore and that whole thing. But I would say, and this was my only response in this particular case, was I think football cucking would actually, the definition would actually be paying for a guy to play for another team in your division. Okay, and I I don't know if I understand cucking enough, I don't think, but in my eyes, that would be the definition of cucking in football world. And they're doing that with Kyle Van Noy, but they don't need him. He's washed. Get him the fuck out of here. We'll pay for him to play somebody else. So what Dolphins Twitter told me last night. So we just have to treat it as such. AJ, you're a cuck expert. Is that accurate? Uh, Nick, surprisingly, I am not a cuck expert, but you know what? I I don't know. Maybe we could. Find I will not let this show on. turn into a cuck show like you try to do every single time you host this thing. <laughs> come on now, grow up, guys. Like they, just come on now. Let's be mature about this. All right, let's go back to the five-hour energy phone lines. Let's go to um, Since Ryan. You hung up on me yesterday too at the end of the show. Well, yeah, you're saying two girls. You're saying two girls, one cup, puke in your mouth situation either. Yeah, okay, this show. On, dump. There's mainly means- dumps in your mouth. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, it's, gross. it's terrible. There was a time, and you know this, that's why you brought it up, is I would puke on site just the immediate thought of it because that, I mean, the way that one butthole just looked like a soft serve. Oh, yeah. I heard it was I fake mean, stuff that jammed in there. I, I think they had to have, but, I mean, there was still a slop coming out and slop going down. Good God. And I am happy that I'm at a point in my life where I don't puke immediately upon hearing about it, but that was a tough 10-year period for me where I – yeah. AQ and others that enjoyed seeing me get sick to my stomach would just cleverly bring it up, which is, I think, what you tried to do yesterday. Got you, bitch. I'm a mature adult now, and I can talk about things like <laughs> that without puking. Let's go to Ryan in South Kakalaka on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Ryan, what's going on, bub? Pat, what's up, man? How's it going? Hey, not too shabby. How are you, Ryan? Thanks for calling in on this beautiful Thursday. We're off tomorrow, so just trying to make a feel-good Friday on a thirsty Thursday. What do you want to talk about, dude? I hear you, bud. First off, I want to go ahead and apologize for my friends on Twitter last night. Uh, I don't think you were worthy of Cuck Mountain, per se. But uh, Cuck Mountain, King Mountain, been going on for a while now. Oh, and real quick, before we go any further, Kenneth in Tennessee 
remind me who your quarterback played for before he was on the Titans. Ne- never mind, that's besides the point. Um, oh, yeah, he's talking about Tannehill down there with Gase. And I, I think, once again, yeah, the Dolphins I, fans, they were kind of treated poorly with Gase being their head coach and other decisions geez, that were made. That he's, we lost Landry. We lost Sue. We lost so many guys because of, well, honestly, I mean, Adam Gase is prime Cut Mountain candidate. Uh, it was <laughs> real. Uh, but, no, um, so I, I just don't see – how losing Kyle Van, I mean, you know, I was hurt, obviously. I, would, I joined one of Gump's spaces. We talked about it. It sucked losing Kyle Van Noy. It really did. But watching him absolute, you know, get ragdolled by Josh Allen, uh, I forget which week it was we played Buffalo at home, I just don't see how losing him is enough to, to then justify us finishing third, even I heard it somewhere and say fourth in the AFC East next year, on top of, our ten and six season last year, and you know, I mean, Tua was what six and three in the in the nine games he started. So I, I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. A lot of respect for you. Love the show, but uh, don't don't fuck with Dolphins Twitter, man. We're ruthless. You got it. I appreciate the fact you guys are ruthless. As has your team been to you guys for a long time. <laughs> but with that being said, because I got a lot of tweets explaining to me the 10-win season, the defense is unbelievable. I love B-Flow, I get it. But they said we didn't lose anybody. It's like, you did lose somebody, though. You know, and that was all my point. Not saying that Kyle Van Noy is a make-or-breaker for the Dolphins. I understand that. But you did lose somebody, and you are paying him to play within the division on a team that he won Super Bowls with. So, like, I, I, I'm not saying that Kyle Van Noy is a make-or-break for the Dolphins. I just had to point out the fact that what was being said to me was fucking wrong, and that's what you do in an argument with people. Is you, Well, that's wrong. That's wrong. Well, you just said they were stupid. That's There's a lot of that last night on Twitter, which is what Twitter's for. But I appreciate Ryan calling in. These Dolphins fans, AJ, awesome fan base. I did not know this. Did you know this? I did not know this. I, I had no idea. No. I, I Maybe is it b Flow? Did he bring the, like, the juice back? Or people have hope now because they were so torn by like what Gase was doing? I, I, may, I, I would assume that they were all there in suffering through the Gase stuff. But once they saw b Flow, like... You know, he almost fought a couple players. He almost yeah. fought a ref. Like, I fucking love B. Floyd down there. Now, I, he's one of the first ones out of the Belichick coaching tree who seemed to, you know, potentially go here. Oh, like, yeah. he might be a guy. I hope that's the case. I mean, we'll see. Let's go to Brock in Indiana on the 5-Hour Angie phone line before we take a break, before A.J. Galanti, uh, former general manager of the Dansbury Trashers, joins us. Brock in Indiana on the 5-Hour Angie phone line. Go to 5HourEngie.com. Use promo code MACAPI. Get 10% off your order of the best energy shot on planet Earth in the moon. Uh, what's going on, Brock? Not a whole lot, Pat. How you doing? Just hanging out, bub. What do you want to talk about? Um, well, I just want to say, you know, I'm from Indiana, so thanks for everything you've done for the city and the program and stuff. I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by the organization a little bit, you know, here and there, being coached by the Dylan Gandy, Ryan Deem, and what? The, uh, what? the versatile legend Adam Vinatieri at one point came to a high school practice. What? Um, but I just got a couple things for you. First, if you guys need a Indiana true Longhorn skull, cow skull, I got gotcha. you. I can get you one of those Need for it. sure, working on a ranch and such. Um, you got one of them, you got a Texas Longhorn? How many inches? How many inches we got tip to tip uh, there, pal? Uh, it's, you know, three and a half, four feet is our biggest right now. It's uh, We've also got the Mexican Esquire Bull, so it's kind of a mix there. They do some beef breeding. <clears throat> 48 inches that's not bad that's a good that's a good texas longhorn yeah, yeah. i mean it's nowhere near the 110 inches which is the world record down there in fort worth yeah. Powhatan. 48 inches is a good fucking longhorn though aj you don't know anything about yeah. that okay have a little respect she's a she's a big mama she's had her couple set of babies there for sure yeah, we appreciate her brock all right we i don't know if we need a longhorn yet but we appreciate the offer that's all right um but i got a question for you um i enjoy the greenery and visiting outer space just as you do um, I was wondering if you had ever thought about visiting the local government and being an advocate for state legalization here in Indiana. Uh, I appreciate that question, Brock. You know, I, I try to stay out of the politics as much as possible, but there is a couple of people I've seen on TV that are trying to lobby for marijuana legalization here in Indiana because there's been so many 
scientific studies that have proved that cannabis is incredible for you, okay? And the initial reports on cannabis was the hippies, and they were against everything that was supposedly pro-America. And I think first images die hard or first impressions die hard for a lot of people, especially in power now. And I do believe the people that are currently trying to push marijuana through, I appreciate their efforts. I'm not 100% sure they're going to get the job done. I don't know if I'm the right guy either. All my conversations with old whites end up bad. They end up bad. That's just what happens. I, I just, I'm not the most understanding human. I don't play the politics game as well as I should. Let's get to a break. I appreciate that. Maybe I'll think about it. If it gets closer and they need a doofus to come push it over the finish line, I'll do that. But I try to stay out of politics as much as possible. We got a break. We'll be back in four minutes with AJ Galante. Yes. Star of the greatest documentary I've seen maybe since Cocaine Cowboys. Whoa. Legit. Fucking AJ, you watched it. Is this documentary right. not the greatest sports documentary you've ever seen in your entire life? I mean, it, it very well could be. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it is up there. It, the characters, what happened? Yes. The fact that it's real. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to AJ. Okay, well, tighten up. We got four minutes before we talk to a legend, AJ Galante of Champs Boxing, uh, up there in Connecticut, and now a superstar because his documentary. Untold Crimes and Penalties, Dan Barry Trash is on Netflix and it's blowing up. Can't wait to chat with him. We're back in four minutes on this Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. All the hard work throughout my entire life, whether it was driving me to practice, to go to work, the coaches that invested hours in me, everything I have done to get to this point. I got a whole town, a community, a family, a tribe of people watching me potentially live out my dreams that we all thought was gonna happen. And when I get to rock, I get a chance to carry eight motherfuckers that are playing for a team that is in the city yeah. that I went to college in. I carry eight people, have the biggest moment in my football career maybe make a team if not with the coach somewhere else hey that guy's got juice let's do it change the entire direction in the course of my family's life <laughs> i can't be excited though no nope. don't even think don't about you fucking mm. dare are you kidding me are you all that just happened and everything i just said there and more is potentially happening in that one play do you, don't even fucking think you Get your fucking ass back in the huddle. You know Barry Sanders? Hey, Barry Sanders, he, he'd score a touchdown and he would just hand it to the ref and he was gone. But why don't I? Well, Barry Sanders also won the Heisman, right? Yeah. He was also like the all-time leading <laughs> scorer in this whole thing. Barry Sanders was unbelievable, worked his ass off. Let's not get crazy. And Barry Sanders had the ability to act like he had been there before because Barry Sanders, by the way, had fucking been there before. And maybe Barry Sanders, the way he goes about business isn't how everybody goes about business. Maybe there's a lot of different stories, a lot of different situations, a lot of different life events that lead to somebody acting differently than somebody that just acted, you know, almost robotic while being one of the most exciting and electric players in the history. Got nothing but love for Barry Sanders. Let's not get crazy. But there's a lot of people tweeting, act like you've been there before. It's like, you think this motherfucker's been there before? Yeah. <laughs> this dude just carried eight people and maybe changed the entire life. He can't be excited. Aren't we a game of emotion? Aren't we a game of excitement? Why is this a fucking penalty? Hey, Goodell! Hey, eat your M&Ms! Sitting on the chair, being cool. You became my commissioner. You weren't. You weren't my commissioner. When, hey, you dance, you're fucking out. Your socks slide, you're fucking out. We don't want anything. We want robots, no emotion. Everybody hated you then, Raj. All right, everybody hated you. And nobody understood why you're trying to take the fun out of the game. You're doing it because you want to be able to just pluck and play. You didn't want to have to have players be brand names because then you could replace them easily. Okay, I understand the business side of it, but we all agreed. The tribe has spoken that the game's better when people are excited. Some things are too much. All right, some things are way too much. There's, there were some dances that happened that looked a little bit more like basketball, where we're all like, there's no way that can happen with a full line dance. We get it, there was some. But it added to the game. The excitement added to everything. Now taking away this and making it a point of emphasis. And I'm not saying that there should be egregious, if something egregious happens, they should penalize them. Yes, please, it's not for the good of our game, not for the good of the league, not good for fans, not good for anybody. I understand that's gonna happen, but a 
point of emphasis means, hey, we're cracking down on this because we don't want it to happen anymore. And why are we targeting that as opposed to targeting something else I'll never understand. My commissioner, Roger Goodell, is going to get to the bottom of this if Sam Ocho doesn't do it first. Yeah. Right? Roger Goodell gave me a big hug beforehand, too, so that's good, cool, sir. Thank you so much, Shane. You drinking? Yeah. Cheers to you, man. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was I feel so like good. it was pretty good. Oh, look at the phones. <laughs>
it was insane. Uh, and then we went to the fights, you know, fights. We went to the um, the show yeah. in New Haven later later uh, that night. It was it was just crazy. I mean, the kids in the kids in my party were like, they, it was it was just insane. It was it was. Uh, China was the best. When I tell you she ate nine hamburgers in an hour, <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> um, dude, let me tell you something. I I remember that vividly. It was my 11th birthday party, and I just remember being fixated on her just eating and eating and eating and it was like i couldn't get over it but they were they were all um unbelievable um, unbelievable people uh aj i grew up around too many italians okay in pittsburgh and there's been uh there's been a couple of situations at weddings and other situations where i've walked into a room and maybe some things were being chatted about and basically i was given a look by either dear friend of mine's dad or uncle that was like, hey, yeah, go ahead, go have a good time somewhere else, basically. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you need to need to disappear take for a, a time. Yeah, take a walk. <laughs> and, and I think the the entire world is fa infatuated by the Italian mafia mobster lifestyle. And I think that being a part of this whole thing is one of the big draws to it, right? But it felt like you and your dad had a much different relationship than every other kind of mob situation I have seen. It felt like you and your dad were a great tag team. Is Did you realize your whole life, because in the doc it says you hung out with your dad, you met a lot of guys, they tra you treated you with respect. You were very mature, by the way, even though the way you dress, I think a lot of people said, oh, he was a child or whatever, but the way you handled yourself seemed to be very mature. Did you guys know what was going on with your, you know what you go, was going on with your dad the whole time, or was there some shit that was kind of held away from you throughout your entire life? Listen, uh, yeah, I mean, me and my dad to this day, I mean, our relationship is, it's so different, you know? I mean, uh, one day he's your dad, one day he's your boss, one day you don't, you just don't know. I mean, we've been attached at the hip since literally birth, but I remember since, um, since five years old, I used to go to, go to his yard and I, I, I used to hate going and, uh, I would be playing with my Ninja Turtles on his desk and just absorbing like everything that was going on. And, uh, you know, you see things, um, but it was so normal, you know? Uh, and, and again, um, it just, a lot of stuff was so normal to me. And, and you know, as, as this story goes on, there's so many layers to it. Um, so many people are so fascinating, but it was just normal life to us. You know, it, it really was for me, my sister, um, the people we were around, you know, good, bad, and different. It was just what it was, you know? Do you ever, do you stay in touch with any of the, uh, any of the players? I know at the end, uh, I forget his name, you know, the, the old tough guy is hugging your dad and the guy's getting a little emotional. Winger? Great. Yeah, Winger. Yeah, what a, Winger. an awesome, yeah, I scary spoke, human he, being. He, yeah, he, uh, he lives in Vancouver. I spoke with him yesterday, actually. And uh, I mean, I mean, that's a guy, even to this day, you, you want in a foxhole with you. And, and uh, i tell you, it went, when we started the team, he was technically our, you know, legend has it, it was Brent Gretzky, who was our first player, but really it was Wingfield. And, uh, you know, he's just such a, such a great man. You know, he's like a real man. And I remember, you know, the, the first off season going into our second year, you know, he was rehabbing that, that horrific injury and, and he stayed at our house the whole off season. I mean, he was like a, a big brother I never had. And we'd be sitting there playing like NHL 05 and, He'd be whining because I would be beating his ass and uh, he couldn't do anything about it because he was in that leg. You know, I, I could talk a lot to him because he was in that cast that, that he was immobilized and we'd be playing PlayStation all day, all night. And if if you're listening, Winger, you, you know what happened. We had a big 21 game series one weekend and uh, it was easy work. And uh, to this day, he still... There's, he knows. He knows the truth. We we didn't have Snapchat and all that stuff to record it back then. But in his heart, he knows. He knows what happened that weekend. Okay, so me and AJ both obviously very lucky to be on some great teams. And I say this every single year going into the NFL season. You can you can measure how fast somebody is. You can measure how strong they are. But that camaraderie of a team coming together is the X factor. It felt like in such a quick time you were able to build a team that really, it was like a family in there. And I think obviously T-Bone is a big part of that, especially with boots <laughs> on the ground. That might be the most electric fucking human I've ever seen in my life. But I don't think you're getting enough credit for the way you build a team as a fucking 17 year old. Have you ever thought about getting back into general managing or team building or anything like that? 
You know, Pat, I tell people, and it's I'm not just trying to sound funny about it. To this day, anything I've ever done in my life has been total luck or fluke. Like, I, I, I always me feel too. like my dad. Hey, me, AJ, me too. <laughs> like, I, I just wake up one day, and it's like you're the GM of a team. Uh, I wake up one day, and I'm in professional boxing. I, I've never been prepared for anything. Um, you know, some people, you know, they, they want to be a lawyer. You go to law school, you know, that's, you know, obviously people change their minds or careers, but you know, people at some point, they have an idea what they want to do and they do it. Me, I don't friggin' know what I'm doing. Have to, I wake up every day and it's like, oh, you're talking to Pat McAfee. I'm like, all right, I'm talking to Pat McAfee. I don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I just wake up and I just, honest to God, we just, it's just like the trashes. I, I wing it. Every day I'm winging it. I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing, but somehow it, it's the ups and downs of life. As long as I get home and uh, I could flop on the bed, it's a good day. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you're doing a hell of a job. At Boston Connor, he was up in the area, and uh, he's part of our show every single day. And we, I don't think I've ever been more disappointed with somebody than after watching that doc and then telling Connor, like, how the fuck have you not told me about this team up there in Connecticut? Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, I've been disappointed in my life many times and have disappointed <laughs> a lot of people, but this is definitely the pinnacle of all of them. AJ, you mentioned uh, watching the spectacle of eating that went on at your birthday party. Were there any other interactions with The Rock or Triple H that kind of stood out that you remember uh, pretty well uh -huh. from that day? Well, I, what I remember, I just remember being in a fog, you know, seeing these guys and, you know, they were, you know, it was like they were, I was just watching them on Monday Night Raw like three days earlier and they're here at, you know, they're at your pool. And uh, I remember The Rock, and he wasn't The Rock at the time, was so such a sweet guy, but very quiet to the point where Triple H was like breaking his balls. He was like, we're Rocky, you're going to talk to the birthday boy? Like, say something, you know what I mean? And he was really quiet and but very sweet and nice. Triple H broke my heart and I hope he's listening because I learned oh. to respect. I had the most respect for this man and I've always loved wrestling to this day. I still watch, but I got the biggest reality check of my life that day. And what I realized that day was man, wrestling is legit. I don't care what anyone says. I used to get into fights with people over wrestling. You can't tell me anything about wrestling. Triple H, you know, he's at the birthday party, great guy, taking pictures, talking, funny, breaking balls. We go to the show later uh, later on that night. We go to the show. They leave like 3 o'clock. Ah, bye, guys. You know, ba ba ba. So we go to the show. Uh, we're sitting front row. It's me, my, my buddy Steve, Mike, my sister. And, you know, Triple H at the time is a bad guy. So... You know, all the guys are at the birthday party. They had their matches. They're coming out. They're slapping us five. They see us. They're all baby face, you know. Eh, you know, I'm feeling like oh, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm, I am. These guys are coming up. To, so Triple H is probably the co-main event that night. He comes out with China. And, you know, they're, they're heels. And I'm just like, yeah, Triple H. Yeah, my guy, come here. I was just with you at my pool. He comes over. He stops dead in front of me. He gets this close to me. He goes, you sit your ass down. You already had your autographs and pictures. Sit your ass down and shut your mouth. <laughs> Dude, my heart sunk. I was heartbroken. And oh. China, China looked at me and she's, you know, she's bad too. So she's looking at me. I'm like, China, this bra just ate all our hamburgers. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, I, I was like, as an 11 year old, I was like, what the hell just happened? And my dad's sitting there laughing his ass off. And, and I'm just like, dad, can you believe this? He's like, AJ, he's like, this is who he is. When he, when he goes into his business, this is who he is. And, but he broke my heart and I'll never forget it. But he actually made me love bad guys because from that point on, I always cheered for the heels. Any time a wrestler was a bad guy, that was my guy. I'd buy the shirts. i play with them in the video games. And so, in a way, he sparked a lot of... A lot the of, trashers! He, he hey, sparked Triple the trashers. Triple H might have some sort of root and seed with the trashers. Because from that time, he broke my heart. And I wanted to cry. And, and he's in my face. And I'm 11. 
And he's like, you sit your ass down. <laughs> and I'm like, I was shocked. And I was just like, holy shit, this guy's crazy. And I'm, I, 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 I've loved him ever since. Never saw him again since then. But he might have been that, that one flick of, of a lighter that kind of started this whole friggin' plane, for all I know. <laughs> I will let him know. And I'm sure he'll send a message to you. And listen, your dad. listen, my dream, I will cut a promo right now. I will face him face to face anytime. <laughs> Triple H, I'll meet you at WrestleMania. We will talk about this shit because we, we, we're gonna have we're gonna have a problem, me and you. And and you know what? In my backyard wrestling federation, I was the only two time champion. That's <laughs> Whoa! I was the only two time HTV champion in Danbury. And I'll tell you what, we can meet anywhere you want, Triple H. I knew you before you were Triple H. We can meet and talk about this. I'm, I'm a grown man now, so you, you, you know what you know what it is. Man. I'm, I'm gonna get it. Hey, I think uh, I think I've pitched like six matches with Triple H as well to him. So I'm excited to hear if uh, he will answer that. AJ, watching that doc, you know it's so captivating because the amount of people, obviously. John Gotti's getting referenced in this fucking thing. And then obviously all the wrestlers and then your hockey team was legit. That UHL commissioner, you guys ever talk to him still? He was an electrifying figure in that documentary, dude. After my father and my mother, no one's ever yelled at me more than Richard Brassell. <laughs> <laughs> and because all of our games were played on the weekends, uh, whether, you know, you'd have a couple midweek random games, but it was all weekend. So I'd come home from college, I, whether it was home games, away games. And, you know, we do what we do. And every Monday I'd be on 684 heading back to New York, you know, heading back to college. And I'd get the call from Missouri. He was in Missouri at the time. You know, his little, little squeaky voice. What the hell are you doing? You, you are insane. I'm going to suspend you. I mean, he fined me a few times. And uh, I remember once, I don't know what I did, but he said, you have to write an apology letter. And I remember, <laughs> I remember writing it out as like a goof in like crayon, you know what I'm saying? And, and we, we faxed it to him and he called me ripping. Oh man, we had so much fun, but don't let him fool you. He loved it. And I, I, I called him when the documentary dropped. I called him. I said, man, we got to take this show on the road. I mean, th this guy, I thought he was the star of the whole doc. I mean, he was hilarious. And that was really him. He was, he not, um, he was not putting on a show or embellishing. That was Richard Brissot. He, he was, um, man, he was, he's like a little George Costanza. He was so angry all the time with me. <laughs> um, last question from me here, and I know you probably have to go, and I can't thank you enough for your time. What is your dad up to now? He didn't really dive into that, I don't think, at the end of the doc. Is your dad still running the yard, or what's he got going on? My dad is going to be 69 this coming January, and he wakes up 4 a.m., and he's on a heating oil truck every day. He carries the hose. He fills up people's houses every day. He, he, he's, on a, he's, a, he's an oil truck driver. That's what he's doing. And I'm like, Dad, you got to take a rest. You know, I mean, I understand it's, it's, you know, but he won't, he's never going to stop. Never. He's the best, by the way. And I was so happy to learn about him as somebody who appreciates the hell out of the, the Italians. You know, I mean, you guys, great food, I mean, yeah. great food, good culture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the stories are forever. And learning about your family and what you guys were able to accomplish with that hockey team, I'm eternally grateful for. Please tell your dad we said hello. Tell T-Bone we said fucking A guy. Can't wait. Need a guy like that on every team. Uh, we yeah. appreciate you so much, AJ. Hey, you, you send me some sizes. We're going to get the whole team some jerseys. You yes. send me oh. numbers and last names. Oh, hell so yeah. I'll oh. take care of that for you guys. Hey, I, I, I didn't earn it, okay? I did not earn it. <laughs> But being a trasher seems like it's a, it would be like a dream come true for a lot of people and myself hey, included. Hey, hey, you know, it was just two years, but it's a badge of honor. You send me, you, you tell them to email me numbers and, and names or whatever you want. It's a done deal. Ah, uh, you're the best. AJ Galante, we got SmackDown at MSG, by the way, in two weeks. I don't know if you're still in that area. 
hey, listen, you tell Triple H I'm coming for him one day. I don't know. I'll jump the guardrail or something, but I, I'm getting my promo with him one day. <laughs> yeah, smack him right in the fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the general manager of the Dansbury Trashers, star of the Netflix documentary Untold Crime and Penalties, AJ Galante. Thank you, man. AJ! Grazie, Paisan. That dude's cool. Yeah. yeah. How about his dad, by the way, on a fucking oil truck now? That guy, who knows how much he was running. Uh, hour two wrapping up on Sirius XM in five seconds. Hour three on the other side should be better than what we just had. I, I don't know, actually. Okay, the, uh, stay on YouTube. <laughs> so, um, that was so cool. Yeah. Sweaters on the way. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't <laughs> Let's wait. Go. <laughs> oh, am I a trasher? Full yeah, life. I like, it. like it. AJ, you should see my next door neighbor clap bomb too. I would have been good on the treasures, I think. I don't know if Thank I would have been able to fight as well, but I'm a goal scorer. You know what I mean, AJ? Are you? Really? I, I like seeing old Rupper in there too. He, uh, he, so Rupp said he would come in and what play like two games or three games on a weekend, then go home for a week and then come back and play a couple more. He had to play at least 10 games to get into the playoffs. So that he, I guess he would pick and choose when the games were, and they were probably completely cool with it, whatever the case. I mean, there's so much to digest from that conversation. I had so many more questions. I hope he continues to join us yet again at some point. Oh, I'm I sure he'll come put... back because I, I think this is going to grow. Don't you think a lot of people – this is going to – it hasn't really caught fire yet. I feel like it's going to catch on. At I, least with more I think it was number four on Netflix last night, six, two nights ago. I assume that's this weekend mm -hmm. it's only going to go yep. Yep. higher and higher. I mean, it is. 200 million people, they say, on the platform of Netflix. They got Seinfeld coming in October. Oh, jeez. Oh, um, yeah. But that documentary, man – could you? He was incredibly mature, I think, for a seventeen-year-old that was handed a team. Yes. Like, yeah, put it at up. the beginning, at the beginning of the doc, I love the way they painted the picture and kind of took you on a ride a little bit, you know. Yeah. But there's no way in hell I would have been able to put together anything and not been a complete asshole if I was seventeen years old with my dad being a fucking mob boss. Yeah. I mean. And it sounds awesome. like from a doc, though he got it by he became the GM. He. He read it. He walked into school, and people were looking at him like, "Hey, good job, congrats!" And then he looks at the paper and realizes his dad <laughs> bought this team or starting this team, and he's the GM. He's going to run everything. I'm like, how? You didn't even tell him. Every day he just wakes up and fucking wings it. He said, "Yeah, <laughs> awesome. we good do man. too, AJ. I think that's why we're such big fans." Um, how about his dad just going straight, complete work on a truck every single day, sixty-nine years old? Fucking yeah. love that. What an I love that. His dad is I. Would never have guessed his dad is 69, especially when you see the end mm -hmm. of the doc like that. I, I assume that's somewhat current. His dad looks great for Good 69. Blood. Don't we need like security or something at the Coliseum? I think so. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell I yeah. mean, Jimmy Galante just sitting on a chair at the front of the Coliseum every day. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we got Jimmy Galante outside. You want you, you come fucking see me. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> That's awesome, man. All right, I got to run to the bathroom. Hour three will be on the other side. Do we have any guests this hour or just phone calls, boys? Helwani. Hel oh, yeah, Ariel Helwani's joining us in like 10 minutes. I can't. Okay, I'm going to run to the bathroom. We're back in five minutes. Talk to Ariel Helwani, who's in the middle of his biggest boom that he's ever had in his career. We're incredibly happy for him, although he is a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. We're back in about four <laughs> minutes. It's the Pat McAfee Show. <laughs> I was told by Del Curry... Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course, right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one on one, Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we probably have a couple of drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. Representing the NFL out of the shoeless golf club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA. Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. <laughs> we were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like we were really, like we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot i was down three with seven left and i looked right in the camera and i go so down three with like seven holes left scotty pippen's about to get this work 
Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. Right <laughs> 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 down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. <laughs> I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippin yeah. ain't easy. By the way, best he's ever performed at golf, because I'm around, better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I told Dell. Oh, I was yeah. like, Dell, what the fuck you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me, and I was like, Dell, he buried me, Dell Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, hey, Pippin ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers. Appreciate it. Hey. Hey. Hey! Hey! Damn! Okay, That's Scotty. the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's no fucking thing you're You right. <laughs> McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. Hour three before a three-day weekend. Me and the boys begin right now. Woo! Yeah. Can't thank you enough for listening and watching wherever the hell you may be. A.J. Hawk is joining us from his attic in Ohio. Ohio State has their first game of the season this year against Minnesota tonight in Minnesota. A.J., are we betting on Ohio State minus 14 and a half? Uh, I mean, 14 and a half definitely feels like a lot, but I think that's a safe bet. If you're going to place a bet on that, I, I would not be scared to do that. Okay, perfect. AJ Hawk giving out picks. I love that. Here we are. Uh, we'll go to FanDuel Sportsbook and hammer that. The Toxic Table is back in the studio. I can't wait to join you boys on Monday yeah. at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor. Tone Diggs, the COVID Cowboy, also doing his thing back there. We appreciate you. Just got done with AJ Galante. I love that dude. Yes. Weapon. AJ, I love that. I love that kid. From the from the beginning of that documentary, when he's sitting there doing like his, they show him on screen. Yeah, he you could tell this dude. All right, there's uh yeah he's not he's not a boring dude. Like he's got all kinds of stuff going on, and he figured it out, man. I give him a lot of credit. By the way, that was Pittsburgh. What you watched? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like uh, now, Jersey similar, Connecticut probably similar, but literally all I saw was Pittsburgh. Whenever they were showing him at the beginning, I'm like, oh, I grew up with like a hundred of AJ Galantes. Now. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has the dad of Jimmy Galante status that I know. Maybe. Maybe that'll come out in an FBI investigation at some point. But I love that guy. And we're getting fucking Dansbury Trashers hockey sweaters, dude. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Oh, what Triple H did to him at that arena, I 1,000% could see you doing to an 11-year-old kid. I did, actually. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. At NXT, whenever the, they had like 20 fans in a Capital Wrestling Center, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, there was this one little kid, and he was awesome. He was very active. You know, he was very, he's pounded on the things. And I was a bad guy, obviously, so I was supposed to be hated. And his dad was standing right behind him. And just getting that opportunity to look at a child and tell him he's going to result as an absolute zero in his life <laughs> is, that's why wrestling's the best. That is why wrestling is the absolute best. You can look at an 11-year-old and say, hey, shut the fuck up, you little punk. Like, you can't <laughs> do that. You can't do that anywhere else no. in the world. 
and that's why wrestling is the greatest. Joining us now, I do believe. Uh, yeah, he's off He's off uh, frame right now, but I think he's ready. Oh, that's what he wants to do, his little oh, okay. Dip. Yeah, he's ready then. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> joining us now, a man who is in the middle of one of the greatest runs we've seen in some time on media. He's the host of the MMA Hour. He works for BT Sport. He covers fighting. He covers boxing. He covers wrestling. You saw him at the Jake Paul Showtime fight. Big shout out to Brendan Schaub for allowing him to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Ariel Hewan. Yeah! Can't, Can't do that! Oh, no! La, 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 sorry! La, 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 la. Sorry! Sorry! <laughs> uh, that is real. Hollywood Hiowani joining us live with a bookcase in front of, and behind him. There we go. Hey, hell of a couple weeks, pal. Yeah! We're proud of you, buddy. How you doing? You feeling good? Well, first of all, how are you doing, Patrick? I'm very worried about you. It seems like you're in great spirits. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say I had a moment. We were supposed to do a post-fight shoot at SummerSlam, right? If you recall, yeah. we were supposed to be in the same room. And then I find out that there's going to be a hurricane hitting New York City. So then I get the heck out of Las Vegas. And then I find out that you caught COVID. And I thank my lucky stars because Lord knows... The people need Hilwani in their life. I thank my lucky stars that I wasn't in the hotel room with you because I, I would have done the Jake Paul Tyron Woodley fight. Could you have imagined if Patrick McAfee would have been the reason for me not getting the biggest opportunity in my life? I would have never forgiven you. It would have been awesome. But to be clear, <laughs> yeah. there was uh, numerous people that were in that hotel room. I don't think I got it in Vegas. I don't believe. Now, it seems like Vegas would be the place where I would have got it. But everybody I was with out there, knew, in planes with eating with sharing cones with did not get it so oh I, I believe where do you think you got it what's the scoop have you given the scoop yet have you told the story we don't know we honestly don't know we were trying to figure it out it might have been a delivery person maybe that came to the office maybe some food maybe somewhere else i'm not 100 percent sure but none of the boys got it and i was with them monday tuesday after the uh, SummerSlam. my wife and her friend was in a plane with me after SummerSlam in the room with me and we smoked they didn't get it so it was just like I'm not in the PJ, trial. they were in the PJ with you and they didn't get it. Yeah, neither did the pilots. So I mean, it is it is a big question on where this Delta son of a bitch came into my life. But it's great to know that I stomped it, just like I'll stomp you if you ever want to fucking run your I mouth will, again. I will bury you where you stand. I just want to know, most importantly, did AJ get it? I know he doesn't live in the same state as you, but I was just worried for his well-being. I'm in the clear, Ariel. He Pat could yeah. not. Transmit that to me. I don't think if he wanted. Let me tell you something about AJ Hawk right here. Okay, one of the realest mofos you'll ever meet. I mean, this guy sent me one of the nicest text messages I ever received. I'm sure. I'm sorry for breaking kayfabe here, AJ. But me Sorry. and AJ are teaming up to create one of the best and biggest and most dangerous super teams of 2021, all right? The feud is over. The mega powers have come together. You will never hear a bad word out of this mouth about that man with that tremendous, tremendous ponytail, okay? I think it's real. I'm pretty sure it's real just like his bookcase. Is that a ponytail? What is it? Is that a man? Bun? The jawline. What about his jawline, not the ponytail, okay? He okay, cuts his own fucking hair. Jawline? Every one of his kids has the same real. haircut, too. That guy is real. That guy's a real mofo right there. So I just want to give... A shout out to uh, AJ, um, and it's just so good to be here. You know, Hiawani running wild, probably the hottest gimmick in uh, <laughs> sports and entertainment right now. And you're lucky that you get me for a few minutes. Hey. We should probably speed this up a little bit because I got a few. I got to do the bump. I got to give those guys the rub as well, and I got some other things that I'm working on. Ariel, that's hey. I wanted so for people that don't know what's been going on over the last like ten days, two weeks for you. Can you can you let people know exactly like what what happened and what caused you to really just feel like you're you're un, like the the chains are off? Like Ariel, we're seeing wow. the real you. Look what look at uh, Edward R. Hawk over here coming out with the <laughs> yeah. uh, hard hitting questions. Okay, this is good stuff. That was well, 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 before this, you were on a run. Then you just said mofo again. It's like, oh, corporate Helwani's back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. You sound like a twelve year old. Cool. Listen, That's you great. don't you don't want to you don't want to get crazy with the f bombs. You have the impact that I had yesterday with the f bomb because I don't overuse it like some other people here. Okay, you got to know when to pick your spots now. Look, it's it's unf if if we're going to be serious, it's unfair for me to say like, oh, it's just been you know a couple of weeks. It's been a few months. It's been a really hard few months for me. Um, I felt like my soul was dying. I felt like I was losing my place in this 
media world that I've worked so hard to, you know, carve out for myself. I felt like I was becoming irrelevant. I felt like I was being forgotten about. Um, and then I leave and then I took time off, which I've never done before. And then I went to Montreal to see my family, my parents, my sister, who I had not seen for over a year. And I felt like one of those video game characters who eats the, you know, the mushroom. And now I'm starting to get all my power back. And then I come back and I get all these jobs and all these opportunities. And they all started at the same time. And it coincided with going to Vegas for the first time in 18 months for SummerSlam. And then it coincides with the opportunity of a lifetime to work on Showtime for the Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley fight. And it all happened together. And, uh, you know, I just feel I, I honestly I'll be honest with you guys. I'll, I'll shoot straight with you guys. Uh, I've always had bad anxiety. I've always been a nervous person. Uh, it got really bad at the beginning of the year. I started to talk to a therapist. I just got off the phone with her. That's why I couldn't come on earlier. And she helped me understand that I should be proud of what I've done, that there are going to be great opportunities. Working with her since February really helped me a lot. I don't know if I have the guts to leave ESPN because, again, I want to reiterate, they offered me a contract. I don't know if I have the guts to do that without her helping me realize that there are other things out there, that I could be myself, that I could be happy and all these things. And so now I started these jobs and everything's going well and I feel like I got my voice back and I feel like I got my smile back. Shout out to Michael Higginbottom, Shawn Michaels. And I feel like you know I, I've, I'm able to be myself more so than ever. And if I'm being honest, I've been sitting back for the past 18 months and I've seen a lot of people take shots at Hiawani. And if I'm being honest, I was told time and again not to punch back. Well, guess what? I'm punching back. And so I'm not sitting back and letting anyone talk shit about me anymore because oh, I'm tired of it. And especially, look, like I said yesterday, you could talk smack about me being a bad journalist, a bad personality, a bad reporter, a bad host, a bad this, a bad that. But don't lie about me anymore. I'm not going to take the lies. So yesterday I spoke about an individual named Brendan Schaub who was lying constantly about me. And uh, it's kind of funny. I put out a little bat signal on Twitter the night before that some people on Reddit, shout out to those people, knew what I was talking about. And all of a sudden I get a text. I get an apology. And I said to Brendan, who I've never had an issue with, despite all the shots, I said, cool. If you're going to apologize to me privately, I hope you're also going to do so publicly because that's where this started. You smeared my name publicly and lied about me publicly and said I was a bad teammate and a bad colleague publicly. And you said that you got the job first from Showtime and I only got it because you turned it down publicly. So I want you to go on your public little show <laughs> and I want you to apologize to me. And so once he does, the beef will be squashed. Until he does... We'll see what happens. We'll see what I choose to do. Okay, well, there's a lot that just happened there. First of all, yeah. congratulations on finding your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. We are happy because every time you came on this show, you were just 10 to 30 times better than the shit you were doing on TV. I mean, it was there was no question that you were going to have success in this independent world. I think I told you that. I believe. Yes. I believe the boys told you that. I think in the middle of burying you, there was a lot of like, you seem to have everything that you could possibly need to make it yourself. I'm happy you bet on yourself, no matter how you ended up betting on yourself. I'm happy you bet on yourself and we're all getting a chance to see it. I got no issues with Brendan Schaub, but I do like the fact that you're sticking up for yourself in this entire thing. And uh, I was given that Showtime job and I said, no, hell one, I can take it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, I would be okay with that. I would be okay with that. You got skills. You got talent. Here's what I don't like. Whoa! Brendan. Here's, Let's hey, go! Here, listen, here's what I don't like about what Brendan has done over the last – first of all, he repeated a five-year lie about what happened at UFC 199 that was 100 percent false. That was first um, uh, spewed by Joe Rogan on his podcast. And I addressed that publicly time and again. For some reason in July, I'm in mont Quebec trying to enjoy a quarantine with my kids and I see Brendan on his little show sitting back and saying, well, let me tell you about, uh, you know, how Ariel, uh, you know, has to deal with the, the consequences of what he did. You know, a lot of people got in trouble. It's like, what the hell is this guy talking about? This is a lie that I thought I, I addressed five years ago. So that was number one. Number two, he starts talking about me being sitting back in his little chair i've heard from a million different people that this guy is the worst to work with he is the worst colleague on the planet i have heard this from all who are your sources brendan who are your sources you don't sit Us. around and talk 
Yeah, right. You don't sit around <laughs> and talk about someone's character like that. It's that's not how this works. You know, you could talk about, again, talk about me being a bad journalist, a bad host, but no, don't. Okay. All right, right, good. All right, well, I'm stuff. happy. And then, and then he goes, uh, what's going on? I mean, hey, I think Shab's at my door. <laughs> I think Brandon Shab just showed up at my goddamn Listen, door. Tell for the brand over there to pipe down. I'm shooting a promo here, okay? I'm trying hey, to cut she, something on everyone, all right? Hey, listen, you cut all the promos you want. You don't want any piece of at Mrs. Batch. <laughs> no, no, I meant the dogs. I meant the dogs. I didn't know uh, her. I meant, the, I meant the company. I didn't mean your wife. Utmost respect. Anyway, then he goes on his pod, his little uh, whatever it is, fight companion. Everyone's got a fight companion these days. I mean, for God's sakes, <laughs> do we all really need six people talking at the same time while there's an actual professional broadcast going on? In any event, he goes, well, how do you think he got that job? You know, I gave it to him. And, you know, I wasn't going to say anything. I really wasn't. I was going to take the high road like I always do. High road, Helwani. <laughs> but on Tuesday night, I said, you know what? Rest in peace, High Road Helwani. <laughs> it's time for the Helwani era, and I am not going to let anyone slander my name anymore. And so I just wanted everyone to know, if you come at the king, Ugh. you best not miss. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you. I want to let you know, I appreciate the hell out of you sticking up for yourself. All right? That is a, that is a big-time move, and I have learned a lot about you as a human through this entire independent process, betting on yourself, sticking up for yourself. Hopefully you and Brendan are able to get past this and nobody else will talk any shit about you getting jobs that you don't deserve because... Can I... Go ahead. I just want to add, I have never said anything about Brendan Schaub. I actually think what he did going from a UFC fighter who, who didn't realize his dreams, right? Utmost respect. And then creating this like thing for him, this orbit, the comedy, the... Po like I had no issues with the guy. And that's why every time I'm like, why does this dude keep lying about me? Why does this guy keep making like, – why is he even talking about me? Like he's sitting back talking about the media business and what happened to me at ESPN and the offer. I'm like, dude, you don't even know me. You don't even text me. I have no relationship with you whatsoever. Just keep my name out of your mouth. Stop talking about me and then clipping it off for clicks, which I don't even know if you buy or not. I don't know if they're legit. But in any event, it's usually one of the highest rated things on your YouTube page. Stop talking about me. That's it. So I have respect for him and what he's built and what he's done. But enough is enough. I'm not all as right. enough with all the slander. All right, let's That's celebrate you now, as opposed to the beef that you're in, and hopefully you'll be out of uh, soon. And the fight gamer seems to be a lot of that. What were your thoughts on the Rocket Mortgage uh, Fieldhouse? That place was electrifying. I thought you did a great job, by the way. There was a couple different situations where you had to showcase your actual ability, as opposed to just being a robot asking questions. I thought you crushed the weekend. I, I assume Thanks. the Showtime has told you they're very thankful for everything you did, yeah? Uh, yeah, so it was an interesting situation, and I really do appreciate you know that how much um, your words mean to me, and and AJ said the same, and it really does mean a lot. I've been dreaming of that role, that specific role of doing that role since I was a little kid. Since I used to go to this this uh, this bar in Montreal called Jilly's, a pool hall, and watch Roy Jones and Arturo Gatti fight on HBO Boxing. Um, I love everything about a big fight week and the tension and the build up and all that stuff and. I've been dreaming of being in that Larry Merchant role, that Max Kellerman role, that uh, Jim Gray role, you know, the, 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 the announcer and also the third man in the booth and all this stuff. And I'm really thankful that they gave me this opportunity. It was unique because of Woodley and there was another MMA fighter on the card. And I just really wanted to deliver for them. You know, I have an interesting history with Showtime because I was supposed to work on the Mayweather-McGregor World Tour for Showtime in 2017. I was a part of that. Um, broadcast team. It was going to go from uh, LA to Toronto to Brooklyn to um, London, and um, I got the job. I was in. I was. I was in LA at Staples Center, literally an hour before before the first leg of the uh, of the World Tour. And uh, Steven Espinoza, who's the president of Showtime Sports, um, sent me a text said he needed to meet with me in the the hotel lobby, the JW Marriott, if you know where that is, right across the street from Staples, and um, I said, sure. And he said, unfortunately, you can't be a part of the broadcast. Uh, Dana White threw a fit, and he doesn't want you a part of it. And so we're really sorry. We, uh, you know, we fought to have you, but it's just it's too much of a headache. I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to pay you in full. I wanted to meet with you face to face and do this the right way. And I really respected that. So that was my only interaction with that man. Now, here I am four years later, and I get a chance to work on this card. And so it felt really special that I got this opportunity, and no one was going to take it away from me. And I have dreamed of being in that moment like Paul Woodley, the chaos of the boxing post-fight 
you know, melee, interview, all this stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe this actually happened. Can I tell you guys a story? Yes. This, this is how, this is, I'm sorry for going long here, but like, this, I, I'm so Hey, it's the Hawani show. And there's Let's people go. watching this Let's one. Let's go. <laughs> Who else do you have here? You have Ian Rappaport on for the ninth time this week, for God's sake. I mean, can we switch it up? Where's Schefter at? I mean, He's come the, on. Schefter won't come on our show anymore because uh, of your old employer, I think. That's right. That's right. Um, in any event. So I get to do this. I'm Shout next to Morinello. Always answers the call whenever we yeah, call. The him, best. Right? The Don't man, listen man. to anything. This, this son of a bitch is saying, Ian. Don't, don't listen to that. But go ahead, please. No, no. I'm sitting next to Mauro Ronaldo, who to me meant the world growing up. Legend. Legend. Former WWE uh, announcer, NXT. Uh, was the first guy to ever put me on his show. November of 2007, he had a show, Fight Network Radio. I was an absolute nobody. Put me on as a guest. Called me the titan of Twitter. I thought I had reached the mountaintop. I thought being interviewed by Mauro, the voice of pride um, at the time, was the absolute highest that I could ever reach. And so to finally get to work with him was huge. And I'm sitting there right before the show starts um, and we're doing our little intro at the desk. And again, like I've been a part of the ancillary coverage. And why, someone might be asking, because as you know, the UFC controls production. So I never got to be on the actual Uh. broadcast, right? I couldn't be in the cage. I couldn't be at the desk. Even though I thought I could add something, I thought I could be good. Not saying I'm better than anyone, but I thought that I could you know, actually do something if given the chance. So here I was getting my chance. And uh, this Drake line that I always reference to pump myself up um, comes to, 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 comes into my head, which is someone told me I fell off. Oh, I needed that from the headline song. I love Drake. He's my favorite um, rapper, artist, whatever you want to say. And so in that moment, I'm supposed to hype up Woodley. And at the end of my little thing, I said, you know, and if I could steal a line from Drake for a second, um, whose new album comes out tomorrow. Shout out to Drake, Champagne Poppy, Drizzy Drake, The Sixth God, The Man. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Uh, I said, you know, for the last few months, a lot of people have been saying that, you know, I said, no, this is what I said. I said, so oh, I, no. I, I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. I said, <laughs> oh, I said no. in Drake's this moment. Watching. Drake is watching this, Ariel. Listen, I said, in this moment, I said, in the, cut it from here. I said, in this <laughs> moment, <laughs> Uh, in this moment, I am reminded of a famous line from the lyrical genius Drake, who once said, someone told me I fell off, who I needed that. And let's be honest, guys. Let's be honest. For the last few months, a lot of people have said Tyron Woodley has fallen off. Tonight, we find out if he needed that. And I'm like, yes, Helwani, you're killing it. You're feeling good. So we go from the desk to ringside. And now I'm about to call my first fight ever. I've never been a part of the broadcast booth. I've never been next to Morinal and Al Bernstein. I'm like, let me just quickly check. You know, are people digging my vibe? They like the suit. <laughs> uh, like, do I know what I uh, can I? DM from Champagne Poppy. Whoa! DM from Drake. Literally five minutes after I said it. Thanks for the shout out, brother. Love the quote. What? Champagne oh, Poppy wow. with 90 million followers? And then- at that point, I was like, no, I'm here. Let's go. Well, it sounds like that gave you the confidence to, to carry you through the rest of that broadcast. But going to the fight, did you? what did you expect coming into that? I, I expected Tyron to win. I really did. I don't know what – I know Jake is good. I respect what he can do in the ring. But was that how you expected the, the fight to turn out? Honestly, Tyron did better than I thought he was going to do because um, if you watched his last four fights, you could see he was a little tentative. Um, He wasn't fighting like himself. He wasn't throwing as much. In his last fight against Vicente Luque in March, he was a little more aggressive, which ended up going well, except for the fact that, you know, it ended up being part of his undoing because he lost in the first round via submission, which had never happened before. So I was afraid. Here's Tyron Woodley, who had looked out of his comfort zone in a sport which he is comfortable in, MMA, now going to a sport that he is not comfortable in. Is he going to look even more out of his comfort zone if you Mm. really what I'm saying. And so I was yeah. afraid that he would kind of be like a deer in the headlights and, and not know what to do. In the end, there were moments, as I said, I, I, th- I thought I was, you know, fair on the broadcast. Like there were moments where he was aggressive. There were moments where he probably could have been more aggressive. I thought he won the fourth round. I think you can make a case for the eighth round. I don't agree with the split decision. I don't know how you score that fight for Tyron Woodley. He had his moments. Uh, I wish for his sake that he was a little more aggressive at times, especially when it seemed like he had Jake on the ropes. Um, I thought Teddy Atlas put a great on my show on Monday. If you've never had Teddy, by the way, great guest for you guys if there's a big fight. Just said like he was wondering if, if 
if Tyron wanted to win or if Tyron was just hoping not to be embarrassed. And there are moments when you are trying to go in there and finish the job, but you're also leaving yourself open. And he was wondering if maybe Tyron was skeptical about, because let's be honest, you get knocked out by Jake Paul, like your legacy changes forever. And I think he did enough to where it didn't tarnish his legacy. I think it tarnished Ben Askren's legacy. I think Ben Askren will always be talked about. Absolutely. It's not fair, but the last act that we saw from Ben Askren was him overweight getting punched by Jake Paul and losing in the first round the way which did. It's not fair, but that's just it. That didn't happen to Tyron, and I don't think he wanted that to happen. So I think he represented. I think he looked good, but ultimately, I think Jake is a pretty good boxer. Now, is Jake raw? Are there some holes? Did he maybe bite off a little more than he could chew? Yeah, sure. But can we just put an end to the whole Jake Paul fighter debate? Like, this man just went eight rounds with a former UFC champion. I don't care if it was a four-fight losing streak. I kind of lost in three years. Like, Jake Paul is a fighter. And Jake Paul is good for boxing and he's good for combat sports. And those guys, every single fight on that card got paid more than they ever got paid in their entire career, including Tyron Woodley. So what's wrong with all of this? I don't get why anyone would be complaining right now. Ask these nuts um, whenever Jake Paul was going through how much everybody's making more money, and then that was <laughs> that was great. It was I great. Mean, that's lead a, up. That, yeah, that's you, another you thing. Did. I know. I, I never got those 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 spots, and I've watched those moments. I've watched those interviews. I've watched those. Like I've watched all of that and dreamed. How would I do? What would I do? Because you know, you you know, Pat. Like you're in those situations. And sometimes you get a guy who wants to be the star, who wants to overpower the guest, who wants to interject and interrupt. I was happy to go 10 minutes without saying a word, as long as you could kind of steer them. And I think there's a science to that. And uh, so I was just really happy, man. If I never get to do it again, at least I got to do it once. I'd be lying to you guys right now if I said I don't want to do it more. And I don't care if it's an MMA. Bo- like, I think I could do that for boxing. Why not? I've been watching boxing longer than I've been watching MMA. Um, yeah, I think I think you did a hell of a job, and you're a great interviewer, by the way. I mean, you just you just ask the hardest question and put people in terrible spots, and they give you they have to answer it. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting style, but you are incredible at it. I want to let you know your interview with Nick Khan, fucking unbelievable, by the way. Nobody ever really gets that amount of time with him, but I mean, just literally asking him about every single hot topic takes massive gut sack. So I have. The oh, they said they said I gave him softballs. The internet, the internet said I uh, threw. Some yeah, highlights. right, dude. You asked him about every hot topic thing. It was like, yeah, I mean, this is a very easy way to get clicks, but also takes a lot of gut sack when you're sitting across from somebody to ask that question. I'm nothing but impressed with your work, sir. I'm very happy for you as well. Uh, Ty Schmidt has a question for you back in the studio. Yeah, Ariel, you were just talking about you know uh, the previous time with Showtime and Dana White not being okay with it. I know you have like the relationship with a lot of these fighters, but are you worried at all about your relationship with Dana going forward? Like, Does credentials really matter for you if you're going to be working at these MMA events or UFC events? Um, like, does that, does that really impact what you're going to be doing going forward? That's a great question. By the way, uh, is that t-shirt in honor of me over there? Because I What's it say? It says heel. I mean, I'm heel Wani. I mean, oh, that's Ziggler's actually. You would try to steal somebody else's okay. gimmick, though. All right. Uh, interesting. Um, I got some news on merch coming soon, so stay tuned for that, guys. Okay? We're doing things. We're doing things here. Okay? We're doing things. That's AJ Hawk. Realist mofo in the game right there, okay? I love that man. If I was Keep in the same mofo. room there, I would kiss him on the forehead. Um, Don't do that with this COVID shit, please. Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm not worried about that. As far as I know, I'm not banned. I don't know why I would be banned. What did I do? I'm, I'm just out here trying to live my best life. I'm not trying to be unfair or unethical. You leaked the Brock Lesnar news early, didn't you, Ariel? Remember? I yeah, yeah, bro. I leaked it. They told me not to. That, by the way, that was five years ago, and there's like some revisionist history going on. You know I was unbanned 48 hours later, right? Like people seem to have forgotten that that ban only <laughs> lasted for 48 hours, and then I've gone to a gazillion events since then. All that being said, one of the cool byproducts of this little free agency tour that I went on um, – after leaving ESPN or knowing that I was going to leave ESPN was every time I was talking to people about what they wanted me to do, I would ask, like, what about the events? What about fight week and things like that? And they all said, yeah, we don't really think there's much value there. Like, okay, you like, what do I, what do you need me there for? So I could sit cage side and take a picture of the cage and be like my office for the night on Instagram. Like, <laughs> what, what are you getting out of me there? Right? Like, that's what everyone loves to do. All the media guys like to take the picture of the field. Like, 
not a bad office for the afternoon. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? You're not offering us anything. You're not getting us any good content. So I feel like with my shows, Monday, Wednesday, and by the way, yes, we typically go head to head, and I'm going to bury you the same way WCW buried um, Raw for 83 weeks. It's going to be a great. It's a bad idea. I told you this. I said, Stay why tuned. are you going? Like, why are you going in the middle of the afternoon? Especially because a lot I was of there people first. are probably fans of yours. I was there first, okay? Listen, it's you know how people slot. have forgotten. You know how people forgot about that forty-eight hour ban because of revisionist history. Ain't nobody know you fucking won at one o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah. Ain't okay. nobody know that. In any event, I feel like I could do a lot of great work um, from wherever I am. I don't need to be beholden to the credential. Thank God, maybe I. Uh, you know, it's it's a byproduct of success. It's not that I don't want to go, but there's just why am I going to leave my kids? Why am I going to leave my wife, my family? to go somewhere and feel unwelcome, quite frankly, be treated like crap, to be treated like someone who is not wanted and they go out of their way to make me feel like shit, to be honest, uh, if I may. Um, what, what do I need that for? And to get nothing, no access, no nothing. I can have the guys on my show. And, and you, you know how I came to that conclusion, honestly? And I'll give a shout out. Is it a shout out? A shout out? Shout out. Yeah. Uh, to your employers. And I'm sure this will make all the AEW marks crazy. Boy, what a sensitive bunch of lads those guys are. I mean, <laughs> holy smokes. Wow. God forbid you do an interview with the WWE guy. Where's the AEW coverage? <laughs> anyway, I went to SummerSlam. <laughs> Shout out to WWE PR. They rolled the red carpet out. They made me feel welcome. They made me feel like they were happy to see me. They gave us you know, great time with, with, with some of the guys and gals. It was nice to feel like a professional and an adult again for the first time in a long time. So sign me up for experiences like that. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still covering the sport. Got my shows and stuff like that. I just – I used to be afraid of the credential thing. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not. But I just want to reiterate. I'm not banned. Unless you guys know something okay. that I uh, – right. Do you guys know something? Do you want to let me know? Did, did I get – We don't know anything, dude. We don't know yeah. anything about anything. All I know is – I'm happy to see you doing your thing and seem to be incredibly happy. I think the MMA hour going at 1 o'clock, whenever that's like, especially with us getting into football season, yeah. is a bad strategy move. But all good. We get a chance to watch it afterwards. And maybe I'm saying that selfishly because I want to watch the show, but I can't because it's in the middle of my show. So maybe that's the whole thing. But I'm so incredibly happy for you, man. Hell of a run thus far. What's next? Next, uh, we got our shows coming up. And uh, I do believe... SmackDown, September MSG. 10th, at the Mecca, at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. I will be there with my two boys. Perhaps we can meet each other from six feet because I don't know if there's any lingering, you know, I don't want any remnants on the boys. But Oliver, Walter, Hilwani, we're all going to be there in attendance. I, I won't touch your kids. I will look at them. Keep your kids the fuck away from me. All right. Listen, uh, but listen, I would like to see you in real listen, life, though, one time. Listen. Don't be surprised if I jump over that guardrail and hit Kevin Owens with a little stunner. That <laughs> oh, all right. Bang. Okay. I've heard about that beef. I've heard about that as well. We won't dive into that. We've already caught enough. Uh, AJ Galante is going to be there at SmackDown too, I think. The son of mob boss Jimmy Galante. So maybe you mind your him. P's and Q's at MSG. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that, is that's, is uh, he really the <laughs> Yeah, yes. But he was and another low rent NFL reporter that you guys have on way too much. Jeez. Good Jesus. God. Oh, come right. on, AJ. Come on, AJ. You and me. AJ, <laughs> can I can I move forward knowing in the back of my mind that, you know, if anyone kind of feels a certain way about the things I'm saying, that you'll have my back when push comes to shove in the foxhole, I can count on you, AJ. Can I? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, you can count on me. I like your I like your you have a great mix of being like Real and vulnerable, mixed with your the character Ariel, and your I think you're gonna eventually get into a violent altercation with somebody, and I'm here to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going down. There. No, hey, peace and love, peace, peace and love. love. Peace you love. know, I, I, I'm here for peace and love, but rest assured, if you're gonna talk about me, there are gonna be repercussions. That's all. <laughs> right, make sure you do that from the studio in your basement, though. I don't think you want to mix hey, up. You see me in that in studio life. now. You can't make that joke anymore. You see me in that beautiful. Vox Media Studio in the heart of Manhattan, New York City, the Big Apple, the media capital of the world. Where are you coming to us from? Huh? Who's in, who's in their basement now, Patrick? Who's in their and what about that promo I cut on you on the bump, SummerSlam? You didn't even respond. You had nothing to say. You were left with your I hands in your pocket. I, I, I even busy. got Heyman. 
Heyman, I, I was running circles busy. around Heyman. 10-7 Helwani all over all you WWE bums. I would run <laughs> on the mic. MVP wishes he had skills like me, lyrical skills like me. He wishes that he could cut promos like me. You wish. I mean, Corey Graves? Who is Corey Graves? What has he ever done in this business? Nothing. Although he did a good job filling in for you. Kevin Owens, great age of brone. But <laughs> guys, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ariel Helwani. Yeah, Thank you, Thank you, Ariel. My computer died in the middle of that thing. I had to fight, figure out a way to plug it in. Somehow this thing's been going for all week without being plugged in. Shout out to my computer. Um, I fucking love Ariel. I'm so happy to see him succeeding, man. Legit. Because yeah. he was scared to death, I think, to go independent. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to bet on yourself. You got to be smart. You got to have some talent to do that. But I'm very thankful he did that. He's crushing it right now. We have to be willing to actually work at it, too. Like, you know, I think you told him. You go independent, man. It's a grind. You got to find a way. And Ariel seems to be that guy. I just love how, yeah, this dude just continues to transform. Like, has everything about him. It's fun. I did. I sent him a text uh, letting him know after a Showtime gig. I thought he did a very good job. And then we've been, he, been talking a little bit ever since. And I think that's why he's so excited. You know, a human of your stature acknowledging his existence. That mofo, you know, he's all jacked up <laughs> yeah. about it. We got to get to a break. On the other side, we'll come back. We'll answer some phone calls on a 5-hour energy phone line and send us into a nice three-day weekend. Can't thank you all enough for joining us, watching, listening, wherever the hell you may be. And shout out to uh, Ariel Helwani. We'll also do a pretty big giveaway, I think, to wrap this whole thing up uh, going into the weekend. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. We have no idea how to do the subway system, but Z is doing the direction, the directing, the mapping, the planning. Well, my tell is in 10 minutes, that train should be ready. Huh? He knew his shit, he said it's way that way. This is Zito guided tour. We're not gonna get spot on the train. you possible are you suffering from male pattern baldness John, we got something for that herpes see ya premature ejaculation God, no more coming too quick allergies as well and that's not all 
We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including erectile dysfunction. Come on! Bye-bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. Welcome back from your <clears throat> bathroom break. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Here's Pat. Today, today's sponsor is public.com. Today, <laughs> today's sponsor is public.com, an investing app where you can buy stocks, follow investors, and share ideas. Pat joined public, and you can see his portfolio if you search for at Pat McAfee in the app. Here's why public is the best place to invest. You can follow other users' portfolios, including Pat, Shaq, Tony Hawk, and thousands more. I believe AJ's on there, too. Yeah. The app is free, and you can start with as little as $1. You can buy slices or portions of stock versus the full shares. Don't sell your data or information to third parties or market makers like other investment apps. You'll get a free slice of stock when you go to public.com slash Pat McAfee to download the public app. Get started today and make sure to follow Pat. Reminder, this is not investment advice. This is just the stuff that Pat, Shaq, Tony Hawk, AJ Hawk are investing on this app. Not me. Valve. What? Get on there, dude. Valve for U.S. residents 18 plus subject to account approval. See public.com slash disclosures. Not investment advice. Once again. And make sure you go to public.com slash Pat McAfee to get a free stock slice. Guys, I know we've been talking, and there's a lot of college football this weekend, but if you're looking for something else to watch, the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs yes. start this oh, weekend <laughs> at Darlington in the Cookout Southern 500, Sunday, September 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC Sports Network. Yes. The Southern 500 is a crown jewel and one of NASCAR's toughest tracks. We all know it. This year, the stakes are high. A win here means you advance to the next round of the playoffs, and a bad day can throw your season away. All eyes will be on Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, but can Tyler Reddick play upset, or can Denny Hamlin bring home yet another win in this event? Find out Sunday, September 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern on NBC Sports Network. Yeah. Cannot wait. I watched that race last night. Hell yeah, we oh, did. Yeah. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, who we won? We legit. Hey, there was a lot of rubbing and racing down there in Daytona. I mean, there was Joey Logano was in first, then he was in twenty second, then he was in first again. It depended upon if he went on the high or low line, and then there was a couple middle lines that got swallowed up there. Listen, when them boys are running, when those cars are humming, there ain't nothing like watching a little NASCAR action. What time's this race? When? It's uh, Sunday, September fifth at six p.m. Okay. Eastern time on NBC Sports Network. And hey, Chase is the celebrity guest picker this weekend in Charlotte for game day. Hey, they're down there in Darlington, and I understand that if KY's running, KY's going to win that thing. Hell right? yeah. You got to look for KY Kyle Bush when Hell he yeah. gets fucking loose out there in Darlington. <laughs> I did watch that NASCAR race. Good race. Yeah. Pretty entertaining. I would not have known it was on if it was not for this ad read, so it's good marketing out of NASCAR. I appreciate it. Those sons of bitches were running. Then there was this huge crash. That's a big huge one. Huge crash at the end, which is what anybody's waiting for, obviously. And then somebody slipped by and fucking won that thing. I... Hey, shout out to NASCAR, man. Let's go to Five Energy Phone Line to wrap up this beautiful Thursday. Have you guys figured out how we're going to give away something yet? Thought we were done with us. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking I thought we were going to do a massive one next week for the countdown to the NFL season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? But it also is one week. So maybe we'll give away, because it's seven days till the NFL kickoff, maybe we'll give away $7,000. If you uh, tweet the hashtag... um, I'm a real human who watches PMS. Yeah. Right now, 
<laughs> you use the hashtag, I'm a real human who watches PMS. We're going to give away seven $1,000 winners because there's seven days until the NFL kicks off next Thursday. Once again, tweet right now, hashtag, I'm a real human who watches PMS to automatically enter. Maybe take a picture. The boys will randomly draw seven people that do that because we are seven days away from the greatest league kicking back off uh, one week from today. Hashtag, I'm a real human who watches PMS. You could win one of the seven thousand dollar prizes we're giving away to celebrate football returning the nfl returning one week from today let's go to the five hour energy phone line five hour energy.com use promo code mac get 10 percent off your order this is only valid till september 30th so make sure you get in this huh yeah, 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 yeah. In the way. let's go to michael in idaho idaho you know <laughs> michael what's going on dude <laughs> What up, Pat? Hey, I'm just calling. I've been usually listen to your show pretty much every day, especially when I'm out truck when I'm out trucking. Um, but one thing that drives me crazy, I want to say real quick to every other caller, is wa- wa- watch how the boys do give calls to guest stars, and that's how we should calls to you. Anyways, my question is: Is did you see that Tim Tebow going to be on first take? And that's probably why he left Jacksonville. Oh, so maybe Tim Tebow, Tebow wasn't given as much effort in his tight end blocking efforts in the preseason game that he got to play because he knew that a first take opportunity was around the bend. Tim Tebow has the whole world in his o- as his oyster right now if he really wants to. The fact that he'll be on with, I think, Stephen A. on Fridays. Uh-huh. Michael <laughs> Irvin will be with Stephen A. on Mondays. Then there'll be a rotating cast Tuesday through Thursday to debate uh, Stephen A. this season on first take. I'm excited to watch Stephen A. and Michael Irvin get after it. I'm excited for Stephen A. and Tim Tebow. What will Stephen A. say to Tim Tebow in the middle of a rant that'll drive the entire world crazy? I'm excited for it. The shakeup continues over there. Congrats to Tim Tebow. Michael in Idaho is also excited about it, AJ. I didn't know this. This this is news to me. So every Friday, Timmy will be there. This just seems like an odd couple to put together. Michael yeah. Irvin and Stephen A. makes sense. Like we, I love Michael Irvin's impassioned speeches when he gets on something and he just gets so juiced. I just wonder how Timmy is going to have. Like what what kind of energy will Tim have on that set? Tim's good when he's on TV, on the SEC Network, and then whenever he gets debate and he's good, and he has the resume to be able to say whatever the fuck he wants about college football because he's, what, Mount Rushmore college football player of all time. So I'm excited to see him and Stephen A. I think Stephen A. is an incredibly talented dude. So anybody he's talking to is going to make riveting television. Max Kellerman out after five years. I watched that yesterday. Shout out to Stephen A. calling in. To say yeah. goodbye to him after reports said that Stephen A. was the reason why Max got pushed out. <laughs> What a moment. Let's go to uh, Josh in Albany, New York, upstate up there. What's going on, Josh? What's up, Pat and the boys? How are we living today? Not too shabby, pal. How are you? Doing well. Shout out to Bubba and Mrs. McAfee, by the way. I hope they're feeling better. Shout out. Mrs. McAfee's great. I'm not 100% sure how gumpy is, but he's gambling better than ever somehow. So maybe we just keep him in this particular mindset or sickness <laughs> for the rest of his life. Karma uh, sick. I like it. Yeah, amen. What's up, Josh? So yesterday you talked about McAfee Fest and how we're going to prove to the corporate fat cats that we got us all watching out here. And I was thinking the perfect event to draw some eyeballs that the whole world wants is an NFL skills challenge, like a real throwback. Okay, I appreciate you, Michael, uh, or Josh, I'm sorry. I would love that that skills challenge comes back. Yeah. Now – to really do it, though, you got to offer up actual prizes for the NFL players. I, I hate that everybody just assumes because the NFL players get paid so much money that they should want to do everything pro bono. It's like, no, if I'm using their time and their effort, they deserve to be paid for it just like everybody else does. So to do a skills challenge, I think you actually have to have a few million dollars ready for prizes. And obviously you'll give to charity and everything like that. But if we really want to make that thing good, I think you have to actually, you know, offer up real prizes. But a quarterback challenge, Ooh. a speed challenge, a dip challenge, I mean, that shit would be gold if we had it in 2021, AJ. I guess I think it needs to be attached to something, though. It can't. I don't think as a standalone event it, it would be nearly as good. Like It needs to be attached to the Pro Bowl or attached to some other big event where you have this like leading up to some other kind of event. I disagree. We can, we can disagree about that because I think that could be an off-season thing where it's like a four-day trip where you just knock them all out, all the contests, and maybe it's like an Olympics-type thing and there's money on whatever the case. But I don't know if that proves that real humans watch our show. Yeah, I'm not I'm so sure if that proves that real humans watch our show. Once again, hashtag. I'm a real human who watches PMS. Of 
course. <laughs> As opposed course. to what else? Fake. I don't know. I don't know what they're saying. What are they alluding to? Hmm. What are you alluding to? Could be something like me, pal. Oh, oh, oh no. Here. no. Let's Nick. go. Welcome back, pal. Thanks. Good to classic. be here. Well, I got COVID now. Jeez. Oh. Thanks, <laughs> Jeez. No, I'm completely digital, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Paul, how are the onion sandwiches in that back room? <laughs> I got no sense of taste or smell, but it's filling. It's filling me up. <laughs> that that sounds like the worst artificial gump we have heard in some time. Uh, we hope he's okay. Let's Fins go up, to, pal. Fins up, pal. Hey, we're a big dolphin show. Let's go to Rudder in New York. Uh, Rudder, we hope you're okay. What's going on, pal? Let's go, Pat and the boys. Let's go, dude. What's up? All right, matching the energy. I can feel it. All right, I got a fantasy <laughs> job tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And I got two keepers that I'm on the fence about, and I wanted your input. I got Patty Mahomes, DK Metcalf. I feel like you could, you know, get away with getting them in the third, fourth, but I, I hold them tight to my chest. What do you guys think? Shout okay, out to you guys. so you guys are the fucking best. No, Rudder, you're the fucking best, dude. Thank you for asking us. We have a fantasy expert in the studio who. Had to retire from being a fantasy expert because he didn't have enough time or energy to help everybody that needed fantasy yeah. advice. Yep. At Tone Diggs, I, I don't play fantasy much. I need to. There's actually, we got something huge coming next week, I think, for fantasy people. So oh. there's a little teaser there. Um, I'm picking Patrick Mahomes over DK Metcalf every single day of the week in most things. Is that a right fantasy move or no? Well, he also, he didn't give us any of the information. Like, do you use... Do you lose the round of pick of which player you, you drafted him in last year and stuff like that? So he gave us no information to make this pick on. Um, obviously, I'm going Mahomes as well, but it's a it's a common fantasy thing to not take a quarterback till way later because they are in a. Now O.J. Simpson told me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, he was he was just saying when he <laughs> said. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is a different animal when it comes to this rule. Running back, I guess, is where you're supposed to go because there's only a certain amount of running backs that can get your points. But Patrick Mahomes is a different uh, animal when it comes to that old-school, archaic rule, says O.J. Simpson. He was just saying. There's a couple. Mahomes, Rodgers, those guys that are going to be the top tier, yeah. Allen. You know, I think O.J. is going to have a tough time finding a a fantasy football endorser, but that guy fucking loves the game. He does. Oh, yeah. He, um, he definitely watches everything. He's he stays up to date, man. Like he, he seems like a legit fan just from watching his few videos he puts out on Twitter. Every day he's putting out a new video on Twitter, and fantasy football season has been something that revives him. He's just sitting in some sports bar giving out his picks, and there's a table of people behind him. I wonder if you walk into that restaurant, you go, oh, "That guy fucking killed somebody." All right. <laughs> like I, I wonder if you do that. I'm not Couple people, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Eli in Michigan on the 5-Hour Energy phone line. Go to 5-HourEnergy.com. Use promo code MACV. Get 10% off your order until September 30th. We fucking love the 5-Hour Energy shots. They taste delicious, and they give you at least five hours of energy. What's going on, Eli in Michigan in the mitten? Uh, not much. What's up with y'all? Just living, man. What do you want to talk about on this beautiful Thursday? Uh, first, thank you for the 5-Hour Energy uh, promo code. I already used it. Um, got oh, yeah. Thank you for buying Let's go. Let's go, Thank Eli. you for doing that. That helps us out a lot. I don't oh, think people really know that. And also, real quick, I'm, I'm sorry, Foxy, but I need you to do me a really big favor this year. <laughs> What's that? It is hard enough to be a Lions fan, my man, and you understand that. Yeah. And I don't know how old you are. Um, you seem like you're in your 30s. 27. 27? 27. Oh. So what? What, 89, somewhere around there, you were born? 94. The last time. Oh, you're born 94? Holy shit. I guess I'm really off on this. But, anyways, the last time the Lions really won anything was in 1991. And kind of like when you started watching football, the more and more worse they got. Oh. And I understand. I understand you're a Lions fan, and I love that. That's, that's something that we don't have in this world. But just for this year, we need you to not be a Lions fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal. It ain't happening. I'll be a Lions fan forever. I fucking love Eli. Thank you for that call, Eli. Thank you for using the promo code of 5hourenergy.com. Weapon. And that is beautiful. I love the fact that people in Michigan are turning on Foxy. You well, know? And that's the reason why I always say 10 and 7 in a playoff win because I've literally never seen the Lions win a playoff game. That's all I want. All right. Um, we're wrapping up here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <laughs> Chris Mad Dog Russo on the other side of this six minute break. AJ, your big takeaway from the week and things you're looking forward to for this weekend, pal? 
I mean, obviously Ohio State's playing tonight. There's other, a bunch of other college games going on this weekend for people to kind of get in the mood before what? Next Thursday night, kickoff of the NFL. Is that correct? I am so thankful for college football for tonight and this weekend. Give us something to watch. Jay's weddings tomorrow, obviously. We're pulling yes. for Jay. Hopefully everything goes successfully. Um, I can't wait to get out of this COVID cave. Yeah, hell yeah. Here we go. I'm going to go out in public, dude. I'm going to go out in fucking public. I'm going to take my first COVID test, uh, I think, either tomorrow morning. I haven't taken one in some days. We only have a couple. They've been tough to find around here. So hopefully that'll come back negative as a daisy, even though I've had no symptoms for four days and doctor says I'm good to go back into public. I would like to be a little bit uh, sure of that. Uh, Toxic Table, Ty and Connor, your thoughts as we wrap up this beautiful week? Football's almost here this weekend. Go Hawks, baby. Go Hawks. National Hey, go Hawks. Connor? We're officially Dansbury Trashers. Here we go. Let's go. What a day. Tone Diggs, I can't wait to watch Hammer Down 15 minutes after our YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show after hours show ends. We can't thank you enough for listening to the show. I understand there's a lot of other options out there. The fact you allow us to penetrate your ear holes on a day-to-day basis makes no sense to me, but I'm eternally grateful for it. Have an incredible three-day Labor Day weekend. We're back on Monday. Counting down to the NFL kickoff on Thursday night. Woo! More guests, more conversations, and a much better show will be taking place six minutes after this break starts with Chris Mad Dog Rooster. Have the best weekend of your life. Cheers. Hey, you guys have no idea. All fucking hell broke loose over here. I can't even sit down because the light broke, the uh, the computer went Jeez. Dead. The extension the extension cord isn't long enough, I guess, to put it from here to here. <laughs> I mean, this light over here fell a little bit. The last 45 minutes have been an absolute juggling act over here. I won't let you know. I've been spinning plates, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> even the home studio is trying to tell you, hey, it's time to get back in here. It's time to get back to business and sit at that goddamn desk next week. I should have asked if I could have just gone today, you know, because my symptoms didn't start till Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. So like 10 days from them would be like right now but and i haven't had symptoms for three four days four days at this point i think maybe five even yeah so i think like i could have gone to the studio today but i didn't want to why you know at this point Mm -hmm. why do it so yeah better better to be safe than sorry right pal i think i told you that yesterday you did (laughs) you did that's good that's good rule to teach the kids too you Mm -hmm. know what i mean (laughs) good rule to teach the kids um Hey, have you tried to work out or run or anything? Like, do you have like, do you have, do you have any like trouble breathing? Okay, so like yesterday, I told you. I think I told you I tried a virtual reality box early in this thing, like day two of it. <laughs> you know, because I was getting like bored and tired, and it yeah. felt like I was throwing punches underwater. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, what I mean, it, it felt as if like you know how in your dream, have you ever thrown a punch in a dream? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And it's just like it's moving. You see it. And it's just like slow mo, you know. That's what it felt like, and I was like, I didn't lose, obviously. Huh. Still didn't go to the judges either, by the way. Wow. One hundred and four degree fever, fucking still knocking people out, obviously. But the whole body felt terrible. Uh, yesterday, I went in the backyard and kicked some balls, and I felt fucking good, man. I was sweating, I was running, I was bombing. I felt, I, I feel like my body's all the way back at this point, AJ. Man, who mows oh, your grass? That looks nice. He does. Uh, thank you. I do have a company that comes over and mows it, and we did hear them yesterday in the middle of the show, remember? And I, and I think because of how good the grass looked is why I wanted to get it back out there and bomb some balls. But turn some over because we asked a lot of questions on whether or not I still got it yesterday. I doubted myself a little bit. Turns out I do. That's good. That's good news. I have no idea how far that ball went, but probably like a yards. four seven, four eight. It was up there. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I know, looks I, know, I know your backyard. That's at least 93 yards, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it's like 115 yards from end to end. It's like a full field, basically. One of the reasons why I bought the house. And people don't know this. Um, when I was in high school trying to learn how to kick, my dad and I used to have to break into fields. Like, actually had to hop over fences, barbed wire fences a couple times and find a field. And it, as you get older, it only like when you're at West Virginia, I could only kick on the West Virginia fields. But even if they had it locked, like I had to hop over the fence to fucking get in there. And with the Colts, I can go to the facility, but it's 
you know, I still got to go through all the bullshit. You can't really kick at local high schools because there's going to become a scene and I like to work alone. So literally the reason why I bought this house, I saw that field. I was like, okay, well, I'm buying this place strictly because I can just kick there. Literally, I know probably like $300,000 worth of fucking work was needed to be done. <laughs> but I mean, that's, uh, I guess, what the inspection's for. Uh, I love that field out there. And it was nice to get back out there and bump some balls. But I feel like I'm all the way back, AJ. I do. I feel like I'm all the way back. Let's go. That's good. You look good. I hope, hopefully Gump, uh, he's doing all right, isn't he? Uh, Gumpy's told me he feels better each day. I don't think he's completely out of it, the symptoms, but he's going to have to be locked down all next week, and that's going to fucking... Yeah. That, the isolation's tough. That has been the hardest part is, like, okay, if you go into public, you're a terrible person. So, like, that weighing on you, it's like, all right, I'll just sit in my house, I guess. And I'm very lucky for the house that I currently live in. If I had to do this in the house I grew up in, I would have fucking... Yeah. I'm not sure what I would have done. Just like all these people, they're, they're sending kids back to homeschooling, I guess, because there's like outbreaks in some houses or, or in some schools. It's like, I don't know if our house would have made it if they had, if Tim and Sally McAfee had to figure out how to homeschool us. You know, I don't, I don't even know how that would have worked. I don't know how anybody's doing it. I guess that's kind of happening again in some schools because this Delta thing's breaking out everywhere. You think Tim just knocks that tree down on his own if, uh, if you guys had to be homeschooled there? I don't know if he does that. I, I would assume there's probably, uh, I mean, there's probably some near death experiences if I guess, <laughs> in the house, you know, hands on from old Tim Matt. <laughs> also, what if you don't have, like me and Jay, four years apart, so different classes. We only had one computer in the house. It was a dial up too. Like, what are what are families doing? Like, are schools just giving out laptops to people and? I do know uh, my old high school gave away, like, a bunch. Like, obviously, it's a a nice high school, but they gave every student, like, laptops and shit. iPads, too. Yeah. I just kept thinking, you know, while I was doing my thing here, like, if I was at home growing in the house that we grew up in during this entire thing, I don't know how you stay isolated from anybody. I don't know how the schooling thing would have worked. There would have been at least four to five domestic situations with my dad beating the fuck out of me I, just, <laughs> I mean it's just i don't know how anybody's doing it right now i got nothing but respect for the parents that have had to go through this entire covid thing i got nothing but respect and admiration for them yeah i guess what um what is your who is it your mayor there that you have an issue with that has been holding things up i don't have an issue. what are you talking about what? what's his name again hogshead yeah hogshead. okay okay have you thought about running? You thought about doing anything? I, I feel like people would love. You could easily win something there. Go for like city council. Listen, I'm not lobbying for dope. I'm not running for mayor. Okay, I don't want to. I think you are. Politics. Like, what, who was it? Who asked that or said like, do you, have you ever thought about going out there and lobbying for dope? I feel. I said. I feel like you do that every day on the show. Like it's it's making a bigger impact there than you would if you actually had a, a position trying to do it, right? Well, I was Brock in Indiana, and I appreciate Brock for his call <laughs> and his you know, saying that he thinks I'd be good for it. But in Indiana, we can't smoke weed. We only smoke CBD here. It would be nice to be able to smoke marijuana and cannabis because there has been thousands and thousands of research and studies done that say like, hey, this is fucking good for you, actually. Mentally, physically, emotionally, you name it. But old habits die hard, dude. We weren't even allowed to have beer on Sundays for a long time, and then we weren't allowed to have cold beer on Sundays. I mean, Indiana is a little bit of a different place. See, you don't like everything's coming down. Jeez, <laughs> what happened? What is I mean, it? This, I don't know if you can see this. This thing just crashed down on me. God. It's a light. It's attacking me. Let me see how much power we got on this computer so I can unplug it. That thing it was like, you're at 10%. This is going to turn off right in the middle of Ariel's like fourth promo. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, all hell almost broke loose. I can't believe we got through this era of me at the house, by the way. I know. This feels like we did it. Feels like we what, did pretty good. What room is that? It's our living room. I mean, a lot of natural light in there, huh? Uh, we got two lights on. I got this bad I'm saying behind here. you, though. It's just that the whole room looks nice. Um, yeah, that's the sunroom back here. A lot of CBD <laughs> in there. You know, it's amongst the trees. You know, it's amongst the trees over there. Hell yeah. Um, okay. I think it's time for us to get out of here. We did it. Uh, who's going to pick the winner for the thing? And did you guys pick the winners for the little giveaway too? The little giveaway. Which little? Oh. Sorry. Yeah. So before you guys head out for the three-day weekend back there, let's pick the winners for the little giveaway last week. And then um, 
the, let's pick the seven people. We'll, we'll give them a cutoff at like. Do you want what's that, a, Do you want one a day? So like it's like for the, the next seven days. Or is that is that too much waiting? We're trending number seven right now, by the way. So that's lucky seven. Okay. Oh, good for us. I'm a real human who watches PMS. Okay, <laughs> that thing gets. Uh, if that thing gets up to top three, we'll double it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Not, that's gonna be tough. We got fucking Drake up there. Oh. There's a death. I believe there's a death today as well. Oh. Rest in peace, Daphne. By the way, wrestler. I believe uh, professional wrestler. Uh, passed away suicide. That is so sad. Golly, so sad. Uh, and also pit mad. <laughs> I don't know what that is. All right, so we'll keep an eye on that to see how much money we're actually giving away. If that thing gets up to the top three, we'll give away double. Uh, I think it is smart to potentially pick one winner per day for the next seven days, and then we'll probably fun. give away a lot of money and shit next week too to celebrate NFL kicking off. Oh, yeah. We're back on Monday. I'm back in the studio. I can't wait. AJ, yeah. what do you got this weekend? Anything cool? Uh, it's a weird weekend, you know, with uh, what, with everything happening in the holiday. There's not really a whole lot of sports, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're, I'm looking forward to watching some football and then actually hanging out. All right, me too. Rest up. We got a big NFL season coming. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to be the authority on Dolphins this year. Hell yeah. <laughs> How did this all start? Your Dolphins situation. I mean, I was one of the members of Dolphins Twitter asked the rest of Dolphins Twitter to drag me for my take yesterday after I saw the odds of the Dolphins being above it. And, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I kind of egged it on, I guess, you know, a little, you know, Scott Hall. And they were, by the way, they did come. They did come in abundance, pal. I mean, I asked for it. They're not really mad. They're not really mad at you. They're just trying to get you to respond, and they know it's pretty easy to get you riled up a little bit. It's Twitter, dude. I mean, who cares? Yeah. I know. That, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Who cares? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's Twitter, dude. Who cares? Bill Burr said, I, I've been canceled by who if I don't log on the app? <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Gold. Very true. <laughs> uh, Joe Rogan got the vid. Yeah. Yeah. Hope he's all right. Yeah, he said it's pretty easy to beat, though. You just need $100,000 and you can buy all these things and then uh, you, you're over it in a day. He threw the I'll kitchen sink what. at it. I did hear him say all that, and I'm like, how come I never even was offered anything? <laughs> yeah. You know, nobody even tried to take advantage of me to spend money on any of that stuff. I would have done it. I would have tried it. I'm happy I didn't. I let the body do its thing, but he did He did attack that thing from all angles from whatever. He had two different drips, IVs. <laughs> oh, yeah, IV, and uh, he had a vitamin drip. He had all kinds of stuff. All nine. Hey, that's what happens, though, when you're making fucking 80 mil a year. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all right. We're not going to be that big, by the way, for those that are wondering. No, you yeah. never know. Mm-hmm. Not this upcoming one. I'm in the middle of it right now. Yeah. It's, we'll it's alarmingly large, but it's not that big. Wait till you hear these giveaways, by the way, after this next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Awesome. AJ, I appreciate you, boys. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Pat. Appreciate, appreciate you. you, Pat. Time to get back. Glad this era is over. Yeah, me too. It was a good era. We got through it. Hammered Don's in 15 minutes. Can after you get it again energy. now? What's no. that, bud? Nope. Can you get it again? Oh, well, you can get it again once your antibodies go away, right? Yeah, I guess I got like 90 days or something like that of just living like, hey, give me COVID and I'm good. They don't go away. The antibodies? They don't go away. When so what is that? That's for him. I'm just kidding. I'm definitely getting now since I said that. So that's three months. I think I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I think this particular Delta strain. There's a new one coming too, Pat. Unstoppable. I think everybody's going to end up with it, dude. I think. What's the I, new I, one? It's called Mew. What's it called? Mew. M U. Really? Oh, I went to a party with at some. Mew is a part of uh, Greek, right? Yeah. That would make sense. Alpha Mu, I think. There ah. was. Hmm. Uh, Tom Pellicero is reporting some punting news here. The Jordan Berry has been signed to the Vikings after Britton Colquitt was cut and released. Jordan Berry finds a home in Minnesota. Congrats to him. Yeah. Uh, Britton Colquitt, part of the Colquitt family. The Colquitt's dad, uncle, grandpa, great grandpa, great 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 grandpa what? have been punting footballs in the NFL for a long time. Their form is always impeccably perfect. Dustin and Britton had a hell of a run in the NFL. I don't know if they're done or if they're going to continue going, 
but congrats to Jordan Berry getting a job in Minnesota. And Durham's nice to hit, and but you got to travel to Green Bay up there. Mm. Detroit's got a dome as well. NFC North might be a great place to go kick balls, actually. How about yes. that? Soldier Everywhere Fields. but but Lambo is a great place to kick. Oh, Chicago, Chicago's Chicago windy. Place to kick, that's yeah. for sure. Our field's I had one of Chicago. my best games in Chicago. Hell yeah! Really? Bear down. I think I had, I think I had two in the five. Damn! Because that grass. It's beautiful grass. Yeah. Soft. You just you could just attack. Like I could just attack, and, and you can do whatever easy. you want. That's like the the tallest rough on any golf course. Oh come hey, on! It's like whenever a green's soft, you know, and you can just like, all right, I'm oh, going yeah. From yeah. right yeah. at it. Yeah, and I don't think I did it on purpose, but it just worked out both times. Like I did. Yeah, know? it's made for tough people. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, yeah Bear right. Not anymore with Kanye. Yeah, he ruined it. Mm. What, he's not tough? No, he ruined, he the, ruined field. the field. Yeah, he burned the whole field down. He caught himself on fire, too, so at least he committed to it. True. Yeah. Hell yeah. Did he really? I didn't see that part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long did I mean, he run it for? Who knows if any of these things are him, True. by the way? <laughs> yeah. He just puts a mask on. <laughs> well, we do know Marilyn Manson was up there, though, right, True. on the porch? Mm-hmm. Marilyn Manson went to head bob, by the way, when that beat dropped. <laughs> him and him, the baby, and Kanye all doing this. I guess Marilyn's only got, like, Five or six charges against him right now. Yeah. Oh. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You knew that. Yeah, I didn't know he was like actual charges from like the the police or is it what what's going on? Uh, lo- I don't know. Allegations, lawsuits. I'm not sure. I didn't. Right. Yeah. To be clear, as soon as I saw him, I said, "Is that fucking Marilyn Manson?" Didn't know he's still alive. <laughs> and then the internet told me all the other stuff going. Took on. his rib out, right? That's real. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he could. Mm-hmm. How does that get started? That rumor. Rumor. I don't think it was a rumor, right? I think he actually did. That's why he did it. Pretty real. Uh, okay. The doctor was talking to his friend at the bar, like, "You gotta listen to what the fuck I did to this guy." Not hey, they it. say if you take a rib out, you can suck your own dick. <laughs> 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 I mean, if you really want to do that, you might just want to do some yoga for a few years, see if you can get close before you actually take a rib out, right? <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I haven't done enough thinking about it. I'm happy you have a full plan now. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just spitballing off the top of my head right now. Maybe, or maybe, yeah, I don't know. Get something to extend your length. Maybe that'll help you get down there. Yeah, if Roman has that. Does it give a commercial for Roman for that? I don't know if Roman can extend your penis long enough for you to suck it yourself. But <laughs> no. if they do, any company that would, it would be Roman. You know, if, if, if anybody oh, yeah. creates it, it would be Roman, and I'm thankful for that. All right, this show stinks again because of you. Great. Oh, you're so All right. Jeez. See you, everybody. I thought we were going to dive into this. I thought we were going to get to the bottom of this. I mean, you can't get into the bottom of it. That's why you take the, the rib out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Have a great weekend. Cheers, everybody. Safe.